Chapter 26, Mission 42. While he's making quick work of that mercenary, Angel couldn't help but cast a glance, seeing Satoru totally dismantle the experienced mercenary in close combat, as he drained the life force of a poor soldier by clasping a hand on the soldier's neck before crushing his skull under his feet. Ugh. The dust finally settled on the other part of the battlefield, revealing a completely bloodied Fang who was one knee, supporting himself via his massive blade which was now riddled with cracks. Meanwhile, Satoru calmly walked forward, his expression still cocky, smiling at his handiwork. To him, nothing beat the feeling of beating up a full-grown man with nothing but your bare knuckles. He was about to bolt forward, when he spotted a sizzle of lightning heading his way, and instantly interlocked his fingers and disappeared in a split second. 1. The next moment, Jackie who looked a bit disheveled appeared beside Fang, and along with her was a devilish figure who had seemingly appeared out of nowhere. The humanoid devilish figure had a face made out of thin metallic chains with no eyes and nose, only a mouth filled with sharp teeth. Its arms were morphed into long chains that had small sharp blades running on each lateral plane that gleamed with metallic sheen. I've contacted the higher ups, reinforcement will be here soon, we just have to hold on for a bit. The devil suddenly opened its mouth and spoke in a familiar tone as Jackie and Fang nodded. Ha ha ha, so I was right. You are a devil after all. A chuckle rang out, as Satoru's figure instantly reappeared before the three of them, as his eyes glanced at the figure of the humanoid devil. You look like a ripoff of the chainsaw devil, pretending to be a designated driver, so what should we call you? The ridiculing tone was apparent, which only served to enrage the devil, as it bared its teeth murderously. If the three of us work together, it shouldn't be impossible to take him down. Fang wiped the trickle of blood on his lips and nose and staggered to his feet, his eyes filled with immense hate and rage. Nodding, the three of them seemed to position themselves according to a strategic formation, with Jackie and Fang standing on the left and right, and the chain devil in the middle. Go, boom, the two mercenaries instantly bolted forward at their top speeds, immediately unleashing deadly attacks, while covering Satora's left and right flanks, while the devil propelled himself forward with his chains, clashing head-on with the white-haired youth, leaving no room for escape. Good formation. Although, I'm surprised you thought you could beat me with only this. Satoru's smile vanished, as he turned serious all of a sudden. He wasted no time, and instantly went for the two mercenaries, blocking their attacks with his infinity, before countering with his own attacks. 1. Bang! They moved at incredible speeds, leaving only after images of themselves, while attacking with deadly force. Satoru sidestepped to the left, dodging a deadly slash from Jackie's katana, before he unleashed a spinning side kick which smashed into Fang's body, as the body of the experienced mercenary curled like a shrimp due to the immense force of the attack and was hurled a few meters away. 1. Satoru was about to blast Jackie away with another attack, when he sensed danger and disappeared from the spot. The next second, a long chain covered in sharp blades slashed towards where he previously stood and cracked the ground with Fang. Reappearing in an instant, he wasted no time and headed straight for the devil, unleashing multiple blows onto its body without holding back. Hark, die. The devil who was blasted away bolted towards Satoru in rage and slashed its chains towards Satoru, while Jackie and Fang instantly regrouped and unleashed devastating attacks onto the body of the white-haired youth. Satoru didn't retreat nor dodge the attacks. They directly tanked the attacks from Jackie and Fang, before he destroyed the attacks from the devil with the limitless. Boom. The next moment, the four of them clashed in a three-on-one battle, rapidly destroying their surroundings with every clash. Although Satoru looked outnumbered, the three of them were rather outclassed with every move of his drawing blood from the opponents or hurling them away with force. Whoa, he wasn't all talk after all. Meanwhile, Angel who had currently finished off all of the soldiers was engrossed in the three-on-one battle, watching intently, even though he had no plans of joining. Huh. Suddenly, his senses picked up on some terrifying presences heading towards them at immense speeds, as he turned around and headed towards Satoru's battlefield. Damn, their reinforcements are here. I have to end this now. Satoru dodged another attack from the Chain Devil, before he unleashed an incredibly destructive magnetic force which crashed towards the three of them and hurled them away. We gotta go now. Angel arrived by his side and urged, as he sighed and lazily stretched his waist. You know, I was actually starting to enjoy the fight. Satoru sighed, as he watched the devil bolt towards him in a fit of rage. He smiled and waved his hand lightly accompanied by an influx of negative energy. Boom! Space instantly folded and shattered like a mirror, before a massive slash swept out, directly and cleanly cleaving through the body of the chain devil into two, as blood spurted out. A moment later, the two now bloodied mercenaries arrived near the chain devil which was seemingly crawling away from the two devil hunters. These two mercenaries are extremely durable and tenacious for humans like them. Angel couldn't help but furrow his brow seeing Jackie and Fang who were bloodied all over still moving towards them. Well, I guess there's nothing wrong with showing off a little. Satoru smiled and flexed his arms, before he bent his knees slightly, stretched out his left arm and bent his right arm towards his face with the index and middle fingers bent in a flicking position. 1. With an sudden influx of negative energy, space itself began to wriggle and fold before shattering like a mirror. Curse amplification technique. Soon, an ephemeral blue light materialized, as energy and matter were instantly pulled inside the small dot-like black hole that had been somehow summoned by the white-haired youth. The black hole soon merged with the energy and matter, before taking on a crystal blue shade and expanding to the size of a small bottle cover. Blue. 1. Boom. With a flick of his bent index and middle fingers, the small blue energy sphere blasted forward at immense speed towards the three of them who at this point had been seized by an invisible force. An explosion akin to a several missiles getting dropped at a single point set off, at the point of impact, completely destroying and destructuring every and any object in its path. How did you do that? Angel couldn't keep his straight face anymore, as his eyes widened in shock, seeing the level of destruction an attack from a mere human could bring. I could teach you if you want, but I'm not sure you'd understand. Satoru chuckled, before turning around and gazing into the sky, his eyes turning sharp in the process. 1. A few hundred meters away was a devilish figure blasting through the skies at immense speeds like a missile, rapidly gaining on their position. The figure's head was shaped like a missile, with a metallic body that was slightly larger than an average human. Flames could be seen bursting out of its feet, propelling its figure at such insane speeds. 4. A moment later, it raised its head and glanced in a direction, seeing a pair of azure glowing eyes transfixed on its figure from a distance, as its bloody mouth parted and flashed a wide grin. 1. Alright Angel, we gotta go. 
Satoru smiled and cast infinity around himself, gesturing to Angel who reluctantly touched the invisible wall. The next second, he interlocked his fingers and instantly disappeared along with Angel, leaving behind a small crater. Boom, a few minutes after they left, the devilish figure landed within the vicinity, Superman style, accompanied by a massive burst of flames, before its body began to morph into the body of a young handsome man with golden hair. 2. How interesting. He had a smile on his face, as he walked around and inspected the damages and level of destruction caused by the clashes. It seems that Bitch Makama has finally produced some bigger dogs this time. He spoke with a ridicule-laced tone before shaking his head and walking deeper into the damaged area. 4. I slash N, sorry for the late update. Chapter 27, Mission V, Swoosh. Two figures mysteriously appeared out of thin air, in the middle of a dark alleyway, while one of them cautiously looked around for hidden cameras, spies, or anything that would expose their identity. Calm down, there's nothing here. I wouldn't have teleported us to this place if it was full of people and all that. One of the figures, a silver-haired youth dressed in a long-sleeve, long-necked black jacket, pants, and shoes as well as a pair of dark circular shades spoke and sat on a nearby rock. And how are you able to teleport? Humans shouldn't be able to do that even 99% of devils can't. The other figure who was a youth with long pinkish brown hair dressed in a slightly disheveled suit with a pair of wings attached to his back spoke with his eyes full of shock. It's not exactly teleportation. I warp space transporting just myself isn't much of an issue, but transporting another living figure along is a bit taxing on my brain, it seems I haven't figured it out completely. The silver-haired youth spoke with a sigh, while he scratched his head in exhaustion. Anyway, thanks for getting us out of that situation, I might have lost if you weren't with me. The youth with the wings also picked up a small rock and sat while resting his head against a nearby wall. Of course you should thank me, I could have teleported away and left you there to die, but I don't want to leave a stain on my reputation. The silver-haired youth smiled cockily while straightening his collar, leaving the other youth to roll his eyes at his words. However, since I've saved your sorry ass today, then why don't we even it with you not making sure I don't return ha how's that? The silver-haired youth, Satoru smiled and gestured with his hand. Ah uh, I don't know, I've never disobeyed Makama's orders before. Angel couldn't help but sigh, while running his hand through his hair in exhaustion. Come on. Don't tell me after everything we've been through, you still want to kill me, not that you can though. Satoru couldn't help but slightly raise his voice in annoyance. I'm a devil hunter, I have to follow the instructions of my superiors, no matter how extreme they may be. Angel couldn't help but sigh, although the depressed look on his face was unmistakable and glaringly apparent. He he he, don't tell me you're in love with her too. Satoru chuckled, as Angel rolled his eyes. Come on, I think you guys would make a cute couple. He teased Angel even more, causing the winged youth to cover his face with his palms in shame. It's not like that, it's just that Makama, she she's extremely terrifying. He blurted out in defense but noticed the slip up and sat down quietly. So you're terrified of her? That's new. Satoru placed his hand on his chin and scratched it gently. Well then, what are my chances of winning against her in a fight? Satoru asked with a smile, as Angel raised up his head and stared at him for a while. I've not seen everything you're capable of, so it'll be hard to judge. Angel thought for a moment. That invisible wall technique you have might be quiet the headache for her, but once she's able to penetrate through, you might lose in a head-on clash. Angel spoke while still in deep thought. Physically, being a devil gives her physical stats way stronger than a normal human like you. Besides I once saw her crush a devil to death with just a finger, a feat I don't think even someone like Kishive can perform with just physical strength. Not to talk of you. His words were honest, but he didn't hold back at all. I see. Satoru couldn't help but nod with a small smile. Now that I think of it, what devil is she anyway? Satoru asked and looked at Angel. She has this power that can control people. I'm not really clear on what exactly she is, but what I can tell you is, making an enemy out of her is really dangerous. You might not know, but she seems to have multiple connections with powerful people in the government. Hence fighting against here would be akin to trying to fight against the country of Japan itself. Angel spoke while looking at Satoru and shook his head seeing his words were falling on deaf ears. Power to control people huh, very interesting. Satoru couldn't help but reel in his thoughts something didn't feel right. If she was the control devil, then what exactly was that attack she used to eradicate the members of the Yakuza? It seems I need to up my game, before our relationship escalated into a full-blown war. Satoru sighed and stood up before stretching his waist lazily. Where are you going? Angel asked with a frown. To find a place to sleep you didn't think I was going to stay here in this godforsaken alley with you till God knows when. Satoru chuckled and began to walk away as Angel rolled his eyes and chased behind him. Oi, we can't be seen in public, you know. We need to call the HQ, tell them the mission has been compromised and get the hell out of this place. Angel spoke and showed emotion other than surprise for the first time. You can return if you want to I can here to complete a mission. And that's what I'm going to do I'm not going to let that 10,000 US dollars pass me by. Besides like I said before, it's not good for my reputation. He smiled, straightened his sleeves and walked out of the alley while whistling like a completely normal person. Angel could only grumble, forcefully retract his wings, take off his blazer and chase up to him. Tokyo, Public Safety Bureau, Devil Hunter HQ. Within the office of the head of the Public Safety Bureau, a beautiful young woman with pinkish brown hair, dressed in a white shirt and sat behind a desk while looking through some paperwork. Knock. Come in. Hearing the knock on her door, she raised her head revealing a pair of golden eyes with round red rings within and spoke. Soon, a young man with a small scar on his nose, dressed in a suit entered and bowed lightly before presenting a file on her table. Our informants from North Korea have brought us some news regarding the Riang Gang mission. The young man spoke, as she nodded and dismissed him with a simple wave of her hand. She then took out a white sheet from the file and read silently, and after a few moments her ace was riddled with surprise. Not only did those two survive the assassination, they managed to completely take out the assassins who were a group of skilled mercenaries and are now being chased by the missile devil. She mumbled to herself before she erupted in a small laugh. Gojo Satoru you have managed to surprise me yet again, let's see how you fare against the North Korea's notorious devil group. She smiled as a cruel look appeared in her eyes. A slash N, during the course of the week, I've been having a premonition to write a FF about a guy transmigrated into the beginning of time in DC Universe with superior adaptability and immortality but I'm not sure pensive face, I'll probably think about it after this FF. 
Anyway, hope you enjoyed the chapter. Chapter 28, Mission 6, A slash N. This book just hit 1 million in views and I want to take this opportunity to thank you guys for your massive support. Honestly speaking, I didn't think this FF was going to do this well, but I guess things don't always turn out how we expect them to. North Korea, Sun Khan, 7 p.m., GMT. Within a small guest house in this relatively small town in the country of North Korea, Sun Khan, Satoru, and Angel were relaxed and made themselves comfortable, in preparation for the long and arduous journey ahead of them. I wonder why you chose this place? I mean it's not bad, but there are better hotels we could have stayed in instead of here. Angel asked while comfortably relaxing in a small couch with his legs dangling in the air while watching TV. Although he and Satoru weren't best of friends, at the very least over the course of the dozen days they had been in this country, he wasn't as cold to him as he was before. Meanwhile, Satoru was comfortably studying a small map in his hand, while munching on a bag of chips and soda and some chocolates. If we had gone to a hotel, we would have had to pay for accommodation, and maybe you forgot but we left all of our belongings back in the hotel when we were attacked. Besides, I was only able to get this place for us to stay because the manager is a beautiful woman whom I managed to charm with my looks and now I have to take her on a date. Not that I want to complain though, Satoru sighed and forced out a small smile. He indeed got this place for free due to charming the manager but she demanded that he go out on a date with her this evening and even though he was handsome and all that, he had no idea on what to do on a date. By your reaction, I'm guessing you have no idea what to do right. Angel let out a small laugh, as Satoru face palmed. I did intend on charming her, but I didn't think it would work. He sighed and put away the map before picking up the can of soda and downing everything at once. Love is the probably the most complicated thing out there. Angel sighed. I don't know what that is supposed to mean, but I can assure you, I have no such feelings of attraction towards her, besides I feel like you're talking from experience. Satoru shook his head and looked at Angel's downcast expression. Before I became a devil hunter. You mean before Makama found you and you became her pet. Angel had only started when she was cut short by Satoru who chuckled and threw the soda can away like a toy. You don't need to say it like that but yeah. Angel rolled his eyes and continued. I did have some I had affection for. She was the one I loved and the only one who loved me. But on the day Makama found me, she used her powers on me and I fell unconscious. When I woke up, all the people in my village were dead. Their life force drained from their bodies. Including her, all that remained of her beautiful visage was a dried up husk of what it once used to be. His voice seemed to decrease at the end of his words, as he sat and buried his face in between his knees. So she made you kill them and your girlfriend? That's harsh, she's even worse than I initially thought. Satoru couldn't help but sigh dramatically. I want to say it's not your fault, but it's clearly your fault since you were weak enough not to resist her, but you can right the wrong by killing her with your own hands. Satoru spoke, as Angel sighed in sorrow. Angel nodded and lied down for a moment before asking again. How far with the mission? Glad you asked. By studying the map, I realized that this town is only 290 kilometers away from Riangang which is about 180 miles give or take. He pulled up the map and examined it one more time. Also I found out through some research that the base of the devils is in a province due north of Riangang called Haisan. I just need to get the correct coordinates and ID be able to teleport us there with a bit of preparation. Satoru spoke with a confident smile. Anyway, it's time for my date. He checked the time on the clock on the wall and chuckled before he got up, picked up a jacket and put it on. How do I look? He stood in front of Angel with a confident smile. Black jacket, pants, and shoes, not bad, but the blindfold makes you look a bit mysterious and weird. Angel replied with an examining look. Gotta add the mystery, fine I'll take my glasses instead. He was about to argue, but seeing the look on Angel's face made him give up as he unfolded his eyes slowly and put on his glasses. Anyway, have fun while I'm gone, though I doubt if I'd take long. He smiled and walked out. Within an expensive restaurant, a young handsome silver-haired youth was seen eating together with a beautiful woman in her early forties. They ate and laughed enjoying the comfort of each other's presence. Haha I didn't know you were so funny Satoru. The woman laughed with a hand covering her lips as Satoru smiled back. You're the first person to laugh at my jokes Ms. Mina. I guess I'm comfortable sharing because I'm with you. He smiled and raised his glass, wondering how he could come up with such smooth lines. Did I always have the smooth talker talent in my previous life? He wondered and took a sip from his wine glass. Oh my, I guess I'm comfortable with you as well Satoru. I don't normally act this way around people, I'm the shy type. She whispered the last parts of her statement as Satoru shook his head. Anyway why did you come here to North Korea, if you don't mind me asking? She asked with an imperceptible glint in her eyes. I came here for some business deals. Satoru answered shortly, feeling a subtle warning from the six eyes danger sense. After a while, they finished their dinner and went for a stroll on the quiet streets of the town. It's not bad isn't it? Mina smiled and said, as she watched the relatively quiet town with few beautiful structures and smiled. Satoru only nodded, feeling the warning from the six eyes instantly spike up. This place is one of the relatively peaceful places in all of North Korea, however, when people like you enter the country, you disturb the peaceful waters, and many devils migrate from that damned place to this small town just to hide from your kind and in turn create havoc for the people of this town. While she spoke, she took a step back, leaving only Satoru who walked forward a few steps and stopped after a moment. I knew this date was a bad idea. He sighed to himself before he asked. How long have you known about me? Meanwhile, back at the guest house, Angel was busily watching a cartoon show on the TV while munching on some popcorn and soda when he sensed a familiar energy signature and readied himself abruptly. Boom, a figure suddenly crashed through the roof causing a large explosion which swept out, as Angel summoned his wings and instantly protected himself by covering his body with them. I was looking forward to meeting the human with the blue eyes, but oh well, let's get this over with. The figure smiled before his body blasted forward at immense speeds, propelled by a gust of flames. Ever since the bounty for your head was put out by the government, she smiled and dipped her hand into her purse. The next second, she immediately picked out a loaded pistol and fired many rounds only for the bullets to stop a few meters away from his back, as if stopped by an invisible wall. That was not a good idea. He smiled and turned around before cracking his neck and stretching his waist. I'm going to take your head and claim the bounty while in turn preventing another calamity from happening once more. She smiled murderously before she held out a finger and summoned. Spider. Boom. Kya. Asterisk. Suddenly, dozens of portals seems to open as a large number of huge grotesque looking spiders with long blades for feet as well as multiple human heads right below their head appeared. Spider devil? Not bad. 
Satoru clapped his hand in admiration, before she slowly took off his glasses, revealing a pair of azure jam-like eyes. My contract with the spider devil allows me to summon her spawns in exchange for amounts of my blood. Ha 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 ha, this time, I'm going to take revenge for what you devil hunters brought upon my town and, my family. She smiled, as blood began to mysteriously materialize out of her body and magically disappear, leaving her skinny and weak. Satoru on the other hand couldn't help but smile, as he waved his held out two of his fingers, as space began to fold and shatter like mirrors. Swoosh. After a few hours, a white-haired figure mysteriously appeared out of nowhere, with a cold expression. His silvery white hair was dyed partly red, along with his clothes, as he walked step by step into what was previously a shelter for him and his partner. The entire area had been destroyed and turned to cinders by powerful flames, spanning several miles, with multiple large craters formed all around. Walking further, he saw something which made him pause for a moment. Sprawled on the ground were pure white wings lying in a pool of blood, with a piece of paper situated at the top. What a unique sense of packaging. He smiled and picked up the paper, before he sighed, flicked it away, interlocked his fingers and disappeared. And, in the last chapter, I saw people saying Gojo already knew that Makama was the control devil. He did not. In chapter 7, I mentioned that he was shocked that a devil was the one in charge of He Devil Hunters Association not control devil. Hope you enjoyed the chapter. Chapter 29, Mission 7, Battle Begins. North Korea, North Riangong, Haisan. Few hours later. Within a particularly large warehouse located in a rather dark and isolated town near a large river, disturbing shrill voices, and hysterical laughters resounded, and the thick negative energy surrounding the place made it resemble a house of devils. The warehouse was filled with an army of devils numbering into the hundreds, with scary appearances who looked ready and taut, as if awaiting a prey. Behind the large number of devils, multiple figures stood with a murderous expressions, while glaring maliciously at the lonely figure of the pale red-haired youth who had been chained and hanged in the sky. His eyes were hollow, his body disheveled and the large wounds on his back showed no signs of healing. His body was enveloped in a thick aroma of despair as he convulsed in the air due to the immense electricity which were traveling up the chains and electrocuting his body every few minutes. Are you sure he got the note missile? You know if we fail the mission, the gun devil isn't going to forgive us. A huge black and red grotesque spider with long sharp blades from limbs and a poisonous liquid continually dripping down its mandibles cast its abnormally large pupils towards the golden-haired male who stood unconcerned and apathetic. Spider's right. You know the gun devil is unforgiving, I say we go get this puny human and crush him. Another devilish figure walked out of the shadows with the figure of a gigantic bear with long sharp teeth and saliva dripping down continuously. Don't worry folks, I can guarantee he'll be here any moment. The golden-haired male spoke with a smirk and sat on a nearby stool, completely unbothered and unfazed even with the several monstrous creatures standing very close to him. And how do you know that missile? The spider devil communicated, while another devil resembling an amalgamation of clouds with lightning sparks streaming across its body tortured the red-haired youth. Because his massive ego and pride wouldn't let him leave his partner and run away like a coward. Suddenly another voice sounded out, as a familiar figure walked out of the shadows, a girl dressed in a pink sweater and jeans shorts walked out with a cocky expression. Besides have you guys planned or put up any measures? Trust me, I've fought the guy and he's on a whole new level compared to other devil hunters. She added and took a seat. That's quote the high appraisal coming from someone like you. The golden-haired male chuckled and crossed his legs elegantly. We all know what's going to happen if the mission fails dash. Crack, boom, asterisk. Boy, you guys sure know how to throw a party. She had not even finished her statement when the ceiling of the warehouse shattered and a figure slowly levitated onto the ground like a god. 1. His short silver hair and clothes were dyed with blood, but his azure gem-like eyes remained ever bright, while he sported a cocky smile. 1. Told you he was going to show up. The golden-haired male smirked and stood up. Normally, other devil hunters don't receive this level of special treatment, but we had to you know, make some preparations just for you. He clapped his palms together and smiled towards the silver-haired youth. Ah, uh, thank you very much, that really warms my heart. The silver-haired youth, Satoru Gojo, let out a sarcastic response and bowed slightly. We thought you were going to be a coward and escape just like the vermin you are, and leave your partner to die. The gigantic bear let out a deranged laughter, as Satoru glanced at Angel and let out a cold smirk. Well actually, it's quite unfortunate that I have to save his sorry ass. I wouldn't want my reputation to be stained after all, but on the other hand, the main reason why I came here is for your heads. His six eyes gleamed ferociously and scanned the warehouse, while his immense amounts of cursed energy bubbled within his body like an active volcano ready to erupt. 1. Quite the bold claim, anyway, you heard the man. What are you waiting for? Attack. The golden-haired male smiled and looked towards the devils before a loud roar escaped his lips, like many explosions. The devils immediately rushed forward like a demonic army, their negative energies forming black cloud that looked over their heads like a symbol of despair to their enemies. Sigh. There's a little too many of them, not to talk of those guys in the back. The only advantage I have is that they don't much about my abilities. Satoru couldn't help but sigh inwardly. 2. He was being cocky on purpose, however deep down he knew this wasn't a battle he could win on his own at the moment. Using the six eyes continuously for hours against the spawn of the spider devil had taken quite the toll on him, and not only did he have to fight the spider devil itself, he had to face off against the humongous bear devil, and the golden-haired man, but he had fight against hundreds of other devils while trying to save Angel as well. 4. Anyway, let's get this party started. A small smile bloomed on his face, as his body bolted forward at immense speeds, as if distance itself was pulling him in, before unleashed his bubbling cursed energy, punching out with immense ferocity, along with the might of red and black lightning bolts. 2. Boom, Japan, Tokyo, Devil Hunters Association, head office. I'm glad everyone was able to make it. Within her office, Makama looked at the multiple figures who had taken a seat on her couch and smiled. The mission in Japan has entered a very serious phase or a decisive moment. Gojo Satoru a civilian devil hunter and angel, one of our very best have been ambushed and are currently fighting for their lives. 5. 
She spoke, as two of the figures, a youth with blonde hair and another with long dark hair felt uneasy. We've tried infiltrating North Korea, but the country has been closed down with suspicious reasons, and using one of my abilities, I've managed to control a creature and manipulate its vision. She stood up raised her fingers, before negative energy began to bubble in her body. Soon, a massive screen appeared on the wall, as the figures in the couch looked on with intrigue, seeing Makama wipe off blood on her lips. I'm okay. This is the least I can do for our hunters. To project their heroic deeds onto all so that their patriotism and sacrifice would forever be engraved on our hearts. She smiled and sat down, as the blonde-haired youth and other youths let out a nervous chuckle. Two. Meanwhile a middle-aged man in a long brown coat with a menacing scar across his cheek couldn't help but murderously glare at Makama. Hold on. Isn't that Satoru? The blonde-haired youth, Denji instantly arose from his seat, as the contents of the screen became clear to everyone. A silver-haired youth in bloody clothes decimating an unending horde of devil with his fists along with power of red and black lightning. Four. Shit. Denji, along with power and Hymen arose from their seats in horror, seeing their friend and teammate besieged from all sides. Ms. Makama. Can't we do anything to help them? There's gotta be something. I can't let him die. Denji banged his fists on Makama's table in anger. Like I said before Denji, there's nothing we can do for them. North Korea has closed off all of its borders and isolated itself from the rest of the world. All infiltration from us have failed and we definitely can't intrude openly upon their country, else the only result will be war. Makama's voice was calm, a hint of playfulness could even be seen in her eyes as she palmed her cheek gently. 4. Calm down Denji. We know Satoru is strong. He's created miracles all always. Let's be patient. We all know someone like him wouldn't barge into such a situation without a plan. Aki World somehow calmed him down, as he sat on his seat shiveringly. Meanwhile the middle-aged man silently took his eyes off Makama and returned it to the screen as shock and surprise flashed through them seeing the insane combat moves and power being unleashed by the silver-haired youth. This is the beginning of the plan Denji. I'm going to make you watch everything you love crumble to the ground, starting off with him. Makama chuckled and turned her eyes to the screen with a smile. Chapter 30, Mission 8, Battle Continues. Bang! The corpses of many devils littered around, causing the image of a bloody wasteland to overlap with the already unkempt environment of the warehouse. However, no matter how many devils lives the silver-haired Grim Reaper harvested, more and more kept coming at him. To make matters even worse, the massive spider devil in the distance had began reproducing dozens of spawns which came at him with no regard for their lives. He refrained from using any special technique right from the get-go. His fists, like a pair of hammers smashed and exploded the bodies of the devils as if they were mere toys. It's starting to get boring, why don't you lot join in the fun, at least make it worth my while. Satoru taunted, before unleashing a punch with his fist coated in immense cursed energy and reddish black lightning towards a group of devils. Boom, their bodies were torn apart from the immense force of attraction, as well as the energy from the lightning and immense cursed energy. Oi bear, why don't you go test out our friend over there huh? The golden haired man looked towards the monstrous bear and chuckled slightly, drawing the attention of the girl and the spider devil. Gotcha. Satoru chuckled, seeing them withdraw their attention from him in a split second before he interlocked his fingers and disappeared suddenly. Before any of them could react, his body materialized right before them and unleashed a powerful attraction force which crashed towards them. His attack was blocked by the group, however, his goal wasn't to attack in the slightest. He silently waved his finger, as a slash wept out, and cleaved through the large chains holding Angel's body. The golden-haired male however was the first to react to this situation. His body turned around at immense speeds, before he blasted a hurled a small fireball which instantly formed in his palm towards Angel's falling figure. The next moment, the spider devil and bear devil retaliated, with full force, a massive beam of negative energy blasted towards Satoru from the spider devil, while the huge bear roared out, blasting out sound waves with immense power towards Satoru's body. Flashing a cocky smile, Satoru instantly interlocked his fingers, casting the infinity around Angel's body and teleporting Angel's figure to his previous position in a split second, before he crossed both arms before his chest, a sheath of cursed energy surrounding his body, and was hurled by the sheer force from the attacks and sent crashing through multiple pillars. He he he, what a smart fellow, and what an unusual power. The golden-haired figure smiled and turned around, seeing that his attacks had caused a big explosion but had hit nothing. Satoru slowly stood up, ignoring the pain his body felt, he wiped the blood on his lips and nose and walked to Angel before flashing the confused fiend a bloody smile. In that confrontation with the spider devil and the bear devil, he had used the infinity to block the attacks of the golden-haired male aimed at Angel and teleport him, while simultaneously casting a technique called Falling Blossom Emotion. A technique he had mastered, but never got a chance to use. It was more effective in a domain, as it could basically ignore all energy-based attacks to an extent. However one of its many drawbacks was that, it couldn't resolve the impact from the attacks and the user would have to tank the force from the attack or block it one way or the other. H how and why? Angel raised his head, as his eyes met Satoru's Azure Gem ones. He could sense a hint of compassion and empathy but mostly arrogance. How does not matter? As for why I saved you, two reasons, I don't want it to stain my reputation, and I'm still aiming for that 10k dollars. Satoru smiled and helped Angel up. No wonder you didn't use your technique from the beginning. If you had used it, we would have noticed and formed contingencies against it. Smart move. The golden haired man laughed, as the devils resumed their attacks and rushed towards both of them once more. Can you fight? Satoru asked Angel. My negative energy is dried up and I'm injured. Angel retorted. I can't do anything about your injuries yet, but let me help with the energy department. Satoru smiled as his hands began to glow with immense amounts of energy before he placed his palm on Angel's chest, infusing a large amount of energy into his body. Wow, that was ah uh, amazing. I'm not at my peak, but I'm not far away either. He smiled and clenched his fists. Good. Satoru laughed. I want you to handle the lesser ones, while I handle those four. He pointed to the four final bosses and sighed. Are you sure you can handle them? Why don't we just escape? If we teleport, they can't catch up to us. Angel suggested. How can you even suggest that? Satoru raised an eyebrow and looked to him incredulously. 
Three reasons. I've laid a spatial barrier around the warehouse. If I move out of specific range, it'll collapse, and the devils will run amok. First off, it'll ruin my reputation. Second off, of the demons escape. Makama sure won't hand me that 10k. And thirdly, the devils will run amok the country and kill everything in their path. If that happens, I sure ain't getting my 10k. Satora spoke seriously, dodged a sharp claw swinging his way and waved his finger, as a large slash swept out and cleaved through multiple devils in an instant, spraying blood all over the warehouse. Fine. But when you reach your limit, we can still escape. Now go. Angel laughed and grabbed a devil by the neck, draining all of its life force, as an empty husk dropped the ground. Satoru interlocked his fingers and disappeared, before he reappeared before the final bosses. I've got to admit, the party has been boring for the most part, however it's time to let loose a little and go all out. He began to stretch his waist as large amounts of cursed energy burst out, wobbling space around his body. I'm beginning to see why the gun devil wants your heart. You are really special, Gojo Satoru. You're too bright for your own good. The golden-haired man rose up, as his body began to morph, taking on a devilish form with flames surrounding his body. The girl in pink sweater slowly retreated and summoned a large devil to take her place. A part of me wants to grab Angel and teleport away from this damned place because I'm reaching my limit, but another part wants me to shatter my limits. How much stronger will I become after I shatter my limits? Let's find out then. Satoru wiped a trickle of blood flowing down his nose as a small smile appeared on his face. Boom. The next second, the five of them bolted forward, four on one and clashed, as a massive shockwave erupted, along with fierce winds. Meanwhile back at Makama's office, everyone's eyes were glued to the screen, seeing the incredible display of power from the silver-haired figure. Oi Denji, is S. Satoru a god? Haimano couldn't help but ask, completely unable to comprehend how a normal human being like them could wield such an immense power and fight beings on such a level. Denji, Aki, and Power remained silent, but their fists were tightly clenched. Makama and Kishive on the other hand were surprised and shocked respectively. In Makama's opinion, Satoru was like a cockroach who didn't die no matter how many times he was hit, while Kishive was wondering who trained him to fight the way he did. A slash N, I'm glad you guys enjoyed the previous chapter. Had mixed feelings about it and almost deleted it. Chapter 31, Reaching Limit. North Korea, Riangang. The battle within the warehouse had escalated rapidly, and at this point, the warehouse itself had already collapsed. The mutilated corpses of countless devils lay around along with pools of blood, painting a gory and gruesome scene that could even cause a normal human to collapse on sight. Angel held back none of his strength. With every movement, he harvested the lives of multiple devils, leaving behind only empty dusks. However the situation was not looking good even for him. It was if the devils kept resurrecting, as more and more kept rushing towards him despite the huge number of lives he was continually harvesting. Boom. Meanwhile on a second battlefield in another area, a huge explosion set off, followed by a massive wave of flames, as two figures were hurled flying with force. A devilish figure with a metallic body dressed in formal clothes immediately stabilized itself, while a silver-haired youth drenched in blood slammed into a pillar and bounced back onto his feet instantly. He's incredibly fast. Although the six eyes could react, my body can't move fast enough due to the difference in speed being extremely large. Satoru wiped the blood off his nose and shook off the headaches while examining his opponent before him. Not bad at all. Although you're barely able to keep up with me, it's a feat that about 90% of devil hunters can't pull off. The devil spoke, as flames burst out its body in waves. Don't get cocky, your speed isn't all that impressive. Satoru grinned and bolted forward at full speed, using the power of attraction from the limitless to pull himself forward, greatly increasing his speed. Both of them immediately clashed once in close quarters, unleashing deadly attacks onto each other. Although Satoru was human, with the continuous use of Black Flash, he had grown and adapted to its effects, incorporating the technique into each move, while strengthening his attack even further with the force of attraction, unleashing deadly force. To think a human would be capable of unleashing such force. The Missile Devil spoke, as both of their fists smashed into each other, as a massive shockwave erupted. Boom. At this point, Satoru had basically turned off the infinity, as the toll of using it non-stop was getting unbearable. Unleashing deadly punches and kicks, he was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Missile Devil even to the point of overpowering him, although by a small margin. With a smile, he fingers swept out stealthily as a massive slash swept out towards the Mission Devil who had been blown back by a kick. Swoosh, boom, asterisk. In a split second, the Missile Devil reacted, dodging the almost instantaneous slash in a split second by a hair's breadth, greatly surprising Satoru. However, behind him, the gigantic bear devil wasn't so fortunate. The massive slash cleaved into its body, though it didn't cause extreme damage to its body, only a shallow wound. A testament of its abnormal defense. Asterisk ro -R, asterisk. The bear devil roared with its eyes ablaze with fury. In a moment of anger, it blasted forward and pounced towards Satoru, wanting to crush his body under it. Satoru on the other hand simply smiled and stealthily waved his hand. Before the bear devil could even land, his body disappeared, as it smashed into the ground. Right as it was about to bolt forward once more, its body was encased in a three-dimensional pocket space, as it thrashed about within, trying to break through the confines and escape. Smiling, Satoru instantly dodged a beam of concentrated negative energy from the spider devil, but was blasted back by by a flame attack from the missile devil even with falling blossom emotion active. That slashing attack wasn't directed towards me was it? The missile devil spoke, as Satoru winked at him. Not necessarily, although it would have been good if it could have taken you out in the process. He laughed and interlocked his fingers. Swoosh. He teleported into the spatial cage while activating infinity to resist the attacks of the bear devil who immediately attacked without warning, although its attempts to reach Satoru was futile. This might leave my body vulnerable for a moment in order to deal with the after effects, but as long as I can achieve my goals, who cares about some puny injuries? He smiled and held up two of his fingers, as his eyes gleamed ferociously. Cursed technique amplification blue. Boom. Immediately, three massive blue energy spheres almost the same size as the bear devil materialized and began to spin while orbiting around the body of the bear devil. Have fun. Satoru smiled and teleported outside, as the three orbs fused into one and exploded, the immense force of attraction ripping through the body of the bear devil, completely eradicating it in the process, which set off an explosion that sent massive shock waves ripping through the land itself. 
When the dust settled, the Missile Devil, Spider Devil, and the girl in pink jacket were both immensely shocked, seeing one of their comrades totally eradicated down to its atoms. Even Angel who was fighting on a different battlefield could feel the impact of the attack on the land. If the spatial cage handing resolved most of the impact, the damage would have been irreversible. They were all aware of the defenses of the Bear Devil, which made them all the more weary of the blue energy sphere, knowing full well that it wouldn't end well for them if it didn't end well for it. You guys should see looks on your faces it's priceless. Satoru's figure came into sight, as he leaned on a pillar and wiped off the blood that was flowing out of his eyes and nose. His body looked frail and disheveled, with several parts torn off, as he spat out blood from his mouth. Pathetic human, die. The spider and missile devils finally came to their senses and attacked together. Multiple long needles formed by condensed negative energy pierced towards him, as a massive fireball blasted towards him with enough force to raise a small town to the ground towards him. Is this my limit? How disappointing. Trying to manifest the infinity technique, the only thing he triggered was an extremely potent headache which made him groan in pain, as he let out a sigh, before his body was enveloped by the massive fireball. Japan, Tokyo, Devil Hunters Association HQ. He took out the massive bear. Meanwhile, Back in Makama's office, the spectators couldn't help but exclaim in wonder, seeing how Satoru skillfully took out the bear devil. However upon seeing what happened next, everyone's heart sank, especially Denji who was gripping his seat so tightly it cracked. Meanwhile, Makama had a small imperceptible smile on her face, as if everything was well within her expectations. Not only had she managed to defeat an incredibly powerful foe, she had also managed to weaken the devil army of North Korea in the process. A slash N. Not sure about this chapter as well man face palming light skin tone man face palming light skin tone. Chapter 32, Rebirth, 2. North Korea, Riangang. Is this my limit? How disappointing. Trying to unleash his infinity to block the attacks heading towards him, the only thing he triggered was a massive headache which made him groan in pain and sigh, as his body was enveloped by the world-destroying attacks from the two devils. Boom, no. Angel's eyes widened in shock, as Zoro gripped his heart all of a sudden, before his body was hurled like a meteor by mere shockwaves from the attack. Meanwhile in Makama's office, Denji instantly crumbled to his knees, with tears in his eyes, as Aki and Haimano let out sorrowful and exasperated sighs. Even Kishayev couldn't help but sigh, seeing a talented prodigy with such godly potential destroyed right before his eyes. He didn't think Satoru could recover or even live from an attack on such a magnitude. He could only take a cigar and smoke, while clenching his fist even tighter, strengthening his resolve to kill Makama even more. In the end, even you were defeated. Farewell, Gojo Satoru. At the very least, your death won't be in vain, and would only facilitate my plans, allowing this world to enter a peaceful age, you have my respect. 2. Makama let out a small imperceptible smile, as she subconsciously released her tightened fists and reclined in her seat. The spatial barrier that held the area under lockdown had been torn to shreds by the immense force from that blast from the Missile Devil, while the shockwaves ravaged the land causing almost irreversible damage to the area. Meanwhile, Angel recovered and instantly rushed towards Satoru's position regardless of the devils rushing towards him. Upon reaching the epicenter of the explosion itself, he saw a figure calmly seated on the floor with his back resting on a pillar. Walking toward the figure, he could notice the third degree burns on the neck and face of the figure, as well as the large holes perforated in his body by the Spider Devil's attacks as blood pooled in greater measures. Oi, Angel, I think, you should, leave. The figure turned its head to him, revealing a face which was half burned and half bloodied which still held the familiar cocky smile he remembered. 1. Why are you so stubborn? We could have left. Angel couldn't help but smash his fist on the ground, as immense sorrow and grief gripped his heart, seeing the once tall and proud figure, someone he could call a friend, reduced to such a state. It doesn't matter, I knew I wasn't going to make it anyway. Satoru coughed vehemently, before he heaved a small sigh and said, I couldn't let my reputation be soiled at the very least, I look cool right. He spoke, as a tear dripped down Angel's cheek. 1. Tell Denji not to cry. His heart rate seemed to depreciate, as his pupils dilated within their sockets, his body fatigued beyond measure and rigged with immense pain. Well, well, well looks like we won in the end. The missile devil reverted to his human form and walked forward, standing a few meters away from Satoru's figure. You're the first human to have driven us to such extent you have my respects Gojo Satoru, but in the end, even you are not god. Ha 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 ha. The golden-haired male laughed hysterically, as a small imperceptible frown materialized on Satoru's face as he took his last breaths. I I am, not a god. He soon saw only darkness as his consciousness slowly descended into the cold embrace of death itself. I am. I weak. He could feel death's cold. 5. Arms embrace his soul, while his conciseness held onto its last pieces of sanity. He wanted to go down as the strongest, and even if he was to die, he could only do so at the hands of someone who could truly overpower him, not a bunch of weak devils who could only take him out because he was spent and exhausted. Reverse, cursed energy. An idea suddenly lit up in his consciousness, as his concour was wrestled against death's influence and took control of the inner structures of his own body, especially his core of cursed energy. 10. He didn't know whether he could actually make it work. Time was running out and he knew it. Death was being patient for now, after all, even the abyss truly didn't want to claim someone with his potential. Reverse curse technique worked by multiplying negative energy with negative energy. It didn't really specify how to go about it, but what if he could separate all of the cursed energy within his core into two, and using the limitless as a catalyst, try to multiply it with itself. He didn't know if it would work or not, but he immediately got to work. Everything happened within a split second, as his consciousness tirelessly operated within his body. However, within a few seconds, the last dregs of life were slowly leaving his body, as he slowly took his last breaths, the glow in his eyes slowly dying off. Meanwhile back in Tokyo, the group of devil hunters helplessly watched as the glow within the eyes of their silver-haired comrade dimmed significantly, as the familiar smile on his face dropped unnaturally. 
The most affected amongst everyone was Denji who felt as if his heart was getting stabbed a million times. The pain was a hundred times worse than what he felt on the day he was dismembered by the Yakuza. He truly couldn't believe that Gojo Satoru, the nightmare of the Yakuza, a person he looked up to was gone in such a manner. He eyes turned dejected as Aki and Himeno tried to console him but to no avail, afraid their friend would lose his mind from the pain of grief and loss. I can't believe we truly took him down. The girl in the pink sweater walked out of the shadows and took a seat, while casting an examining glance at Satoru's corpse, and Angel who was still kneeling beside it. I didn't think it was going to take much effort from us, after all, he is a human. The golden-haired male stretched his back and said with a sigh, We even most big bear in the process. God knows how strong he'd have become if we allowed him to continue growing. She added, Anyway, kill the angel fiend and wrap up the body. The gun devil's waiting. He ordered, turned around and took a few steps away. B.A. Dumb? Six. Just as he was about to exist, his senses picked up on a beating sound. One so keen that the normal ear couldn't hear, a testament to his terrifying senses. Asterisk B.A. Dumb? Asterisk. The sound reverberated once more with increased ferocity, like the sound of beating drums, and this time even Angel noticed and lifted his eyes, now filled with shock. Seven. Makama whose face was riddled with a celebratory smile suddenly frowned, her keen senses picking up on an energy signature, while the beating sound reverberated. At this point, Aki, Denji, Haimeno, and Power couldn't help but be stunned at the revelation. One. Hell, even Kishive's cigarette dropped out of his mouth unwillingly, as the sounds ache into a heartbeat sounded out. Asterisk B.A. Dumb? Asterisk. 3. The sound reverberated once more, a tendrils of an unknown pure energy began to spread out. One that disgusted yet terrified the devils, as if they had met their nemesis. End him now. The golden-haired male roared out and transformed back into his devil form, before he gathered a small but extremely condensed fireball within his palms and unleashed a frightening attack, multiple times stronger than before. The spider devil also attacked without holding back, as the other devils rushed towards them. However, within a distance of a hair's breadth, their attacks were immediately sniffed out, akin to a candle flame within a thunderstorm. Boom! The next moment, an extremely powerful and seemingly infinite energy burst out with immense force, setting off an explosion akin to multiple nuclear bombs exploding in a single vicinity, as everyone and everything except Angel was hurled back by the immense force, with the body of the fallen silver-haired devil hunter as the epicenter. 4. I slash N, hope you enjoyed the chapter. Thanks for the support guys, really appreciate. Maybe I might throw in an extra chapter or two later today, so stay tuned. Chapter 33, Enlightened. The next moment, an extremely powerful and seemingly infinite amount of energy burst out setting off an explosion akin to that of multiple nuclear warheads, hurling everyone and everything except Angel with immense force, with the body of the fallen silver-haired devil hunter as epicenter. What just happened? At this point, the group of young devil hunters at the headquarters couldn't help but rise to their feet, as they witnessed the events unfolding on the screen before them. Denji who had almost gone crazy, now had a relieved smile on his face. He knew nothing or no one else could create such a phenomenon except for his big brother, Gojo Satoru. Deep down within him, he trusted and believed in him more than he did in himself. Makama on the other hand felt like exploding in a fit of rage. The corner of her lips couldn't help but twitch in fury and annoyance, while witnessing the events currently unfold. She couldn't understand how one simple human being could be so troublesome to deal with. Not only did her power not work on him, he seemed to be creating miracles upon miracles, continually escaping all of her schemes and machinations. I guess I'd really have to make a move myself. She closed her eyes and thought. Meanwhile, Kishive let out a small chuckle while his eyes lingered on Makama who was trying her very best to maintain her calm expression. After the dust settled, the figure of the golden-haired male came into sight, with his clothes disheveled and torn apart, along with the spider devil who seemed to even be injured and the girl in the pink sweater. What the hell was that about? She couldn't help but swear, while coughing. I don't know but, whatever that was, it might have been a last-ditch effort to try to take us down together or dash. The golden-haired male tried to explain the situation, but his eyes widened the next second seeing a familiar figure standing a few meters before them. Even Angel was shocked, seeing as how even he couldn't react to the speed at which the figure who was on his last dregs of life had awakened with. Oi, long time no see. The silver-haired youth chuckled, and all of a sudden, all the burns, holes, and every single injury in and on his body healed within a split second. You, how are you still alive? The girl in the pink sweater couldn't help but exclaim in shock, as if she had seen a ghost. He he he. I can't believe it worked. I can't believe it worked. Ha 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 ha. Satoru who seemed like a ghost couldn't help but stretch wide his arms as he laughed hysterically, like a mad scientist who had succeeded in an revolutionary experiment. What is he talking about? The golden-haired male couldn't help but feel a chill down his spine. Even Angel couldn't help but retreat a few steps in fear. I did it. I finally transcended the limits of mortality. I thought it was impossible but I did it. Satoru couldn't help but hang on to the orgasmic sensation of success, as a pleased smile hang on his face. The golden-haired male was having enough of his madness. He instantly transformed into his devil form and blasted forth at incredible speeds before throwing a punch packed by the power of an exploding missile. However Satoru only sidestepped and dodged the punch with his eyes closed, before he dodged another with nothing but simple movements, as if he was taking a walk in a park. You think you're some kind of god. The missile devil roared out and fired a massive explosion towards Satoru who only jumped and suspended in the air while bathed in an ethereal glow with a satisfied smile on his face. I have achieved true enlightenment, stepped into the boundary of the divine, crossed the thresholds of mortality you're nothing but an ant. Cursed technique reversal. A condescending smile hung on his face, as the six eyes glowed ethereally while space itself began to shake and wobble. Holding up his index and middle fingers, a small black hole materialized, before it turned into a small red energy sphere along with the folding and shattering of space like mirrors. Red. Boom. The world itself seemed to wobble, as if acknowledging the presence of a terrifying existence. The next moment, the dense energy sphere exploded, immediately shattering space like a mirror, while effectively repelling and crushing everything in its path. The missile devil was hurled back like a comet, with his body bearing full brunt of the attack. Along with almost a third of the devils, he was almost torn to pieces, as he immediately reverted to his human form and puked out a mouthful of blood. 
Damn, what the hell was that? The girl in the pink sweater couldn't help but wipe a bead of sweat on her forehead and stealthily made a run for it, while abandoning her comrades. However, a few meters away, space instantly shattered, before her, and her body was sucked in into a black hole along with her horrified screams and torn to shreds as space mended itself in a split second and returned to normal. I'm being watched. Satoru who seemed to lie in the air as if it were some sort of mattress suddenly turned around, facing what looked like a small crow perching on top of a rock, feeling the somehow familiar negative energy surrounding its body. I guess you're satisfied with the show right, Makama. His voice trailed off in the distance, as he turned around and faced the small crow with a cocky smile. He see can see us. Haimano stuttered and took a seat in horror. She didn't know if Satoru had gone crazy at this point or something. Even Kishai had an unnatural expression on his face, before he let out a small smile. It seemed he wasn't the only one with enmity with Makama, and with a beast like the silver-haired brat on his side, he was sure he could put Makama down. Meanwhile the orchestrator of all this had an unnatural smile on her face, with her eyes bubbling in pure unadulterated rage. What the hell are you waiting for? Kill him. The golden-haired male roared out towards what remained of the devils in fury, while clutching his bloodied left arm in pain. The devils instantly rushed forth and this time, even the spider devil entered the fray, rushing towards the opponent, in hopes of using sheer numbers to tie him down one more time. Oi, Satoru, do you need help? I can take care of the lesser ones while you deal with the stronger ones. Angel offered with a serious expression. Nah, I'm good. You might want to leave this area. He chuckled, while Angel nodded, bolted away with incredible speed. In the face of pure strength, all schemes and machinations will crumble. Satoru couldn't help but flash a small smile towards the small crow, knowing fully well that his nemesis was watching, throughout heaven and earth. At this point, even Makama was on her feet, unable to sit any longer, seeing her nemesis bathed in an ethereal glow, proclaiming himself unrivaled under the heavens. I alone am the honored one. Satoru completes his statement with smile, as his arms began to slowly move around, as if he was churning the waves of an ocean. Cursed amplification technique, laughs blue. He finally interlocked his fingers and uttered, as an overly large and dense blue energy sphere materialized behind him in a split second. Cursed technique reversal, red. On his right, a dense red energy sphere materialized, the same size as the blue sphere, as a magnetic wave of distortion exploded forth from the space in between the two energy spheres. By combining attraction and repulsion, the power of annihilation is realized. Cursed technique, hollow purple. He smiled and held up his fingers as he mumbled to himself. The next second, the two dense orbs began to fuse into one, accompanied by flashes of purple lightning, in the clouds and around him akin to the inescapable fury of a god. Soon, a dense sphere of purplish color materialized together with multiple black holes, which blasted forward towards the devil army, completely annihilating everything in its path down to the atoms. He's a walking natural disaster. Angel who had run as far as his legs could take him, stopped and turned around. His jaws dropped in the next second, seeing the churning winds and flashes of purple lightning in the sky. However the next second, the earth itself quaked, before a massive purple light exploded forth, with immense shockwaves that hurled him flying backwards even though he was several kilometers away from the epicenter. After the dust settled, he raised his head only to see the land totally destroyed and laid waste to, unfit to be called a habitat for living organisms any longer, while the silver-haired god like being levitated in the sky, a satisfied expression on his face. Meanwhile, Makama couldn't help but take multiple deep breaths to calm herself, while Denji and the others cheered although the screen had vanished a few minutes ago, due to the mysterious purple light. Makama, Makama, your arch nemesis finally appeared huh kishai smugly spoke before he took out a cigar and walked out with the others leaving makama within deep fury chapter 34 premonitions 4 time skip kyoto japan bang bang asterisk within a small training room a silver-haired youth unleashed several blows onto a punching bag riddled with holes his moments were gracious and although he moved at incredible speeds every single punch kick combo was executed with a calm disposition like that of an immortal three after a while he stretched his back and let out a yawn before walking forward to pick up his towel and a bottle took a sip and sat cross-legged on the ground while wiping his face off sigh what a beautiful morning it is feeling the waves of sunshine gently caress his body, he let out a satisfied chuckle and lied down, while his piercing blue eyes couldn't help but stare at the ceiling. Why do I keep having these bad premonitions, as if something terrible is about to happen to someone or something? 3. He sighed deeply and furrowed his brows, before he sat up in annoyance. After teleporting from North Korea a few weeks ago along with his partner after they completed one of the hardest Devil Hunter missions, it'd been only a few weeks, however, ever since he returned, he'd been having premonitions, as if something troublesome was on its way. He didn't know what or who was coming, but having such premonitions without having an idea of what was going to happen was annoying in the very least. Might it be Makama? He sighed as the image of pale red-haired young woman flashed through his mind. 14. Anyway, it shouldn't matter, after all, I'm the strongest. He smiled and lied back down. 6. How strong am I anyway? After learning how to use purple, I might have crossed the threshold for at least mastery of the limitless. He smiled, picked up a small pebble, before he flicked it with a finger, accompanied by a flash of blue light. The pebble blasted forward at nisonic speed, before piercing a hole through a multiple metallic dumbbells, as if they were nothing but paper. Unbothered by the superhuman feat he had just executed, he still remained in deep thought. As of now, the only thing he needed to do was learn or materialize his domain expansion and he would have reached complete mastery of the limitless. However, he there was so much he could already imagine achieving with the limitless that at this point, even a domain felt somewhat normal for him. 3. Besides he had not yet even explored the mysteries of reverse curse technique, and positive energy. He had only recently uncovered another use of positive energy, that apart from healing wounds, the positive energy itself was the bane of devils. Just like water and fire, the two were the natural bane of each other. With devils being formed from negative energy, using positive energy on them, which was their natural opposite, would not only kill them, but naturally erase them. 1. 
It worked like the concept of an acid-base reaction or the neutralization reaction. Mixing an acid and base with equal pH and pole respectively, would only neutralize both of them. However, if the acid is stronger than the base, then a part of the acid would remain, while the base is neutralized, or vice versa. It worked in the same way for him. If the devil was extremely strong, he'd have to use an equivalent amount of positive energy in order to kill or even erase it. Oi, Satoru, I knew I'll find you here. As he mused to himself, a loud shout drew him out of his thoughts, as three figures barged into his training room unannounced. The first was a young man in a white shirt, black tie, and pants and sneakers. His hair was blonde and messy, and a large smile was plastered all over his face. The second and third were two youths as well, one with long pale red hair, dressed in an all-black suit with an apathetic expression, while the other was slightly tall, dark-haired, and dressed similarly. What do you guys want? I told you, I ain't taking any missions within the span of a few weeks. Satoru couldn't help but sigh and sit up while his piercing blue gems rested on the youths. Our missions would be a lot easier if you were with us, you know, and we would be able to accomplish much. The tall youth with the dark hair smiled and said, So what, you guys still want me to babysit? Come on Aki, you've grown a lot stronger. Can't you still handle those weak devils with ease? Besides Angel is there with you isn't he? Satoru chuckled and covered his eyes with his arms. Weren't you the one who kept blabbing on and on about reputation? What? Now you don't want the reputation anymore. Angel couldn't help but raise an eyebrow. Don't try to tempt me Angel, I won't fall for your tricks. Besides, I'm having lunch with Kishive. Satoru couldn't help but face palm, recalling the middle-aged devil hunter who was supposedly Denji and Power's teacher. The man was scary in his own right, and boy did he reek of alcohol sometimes. Even Satoru with all of strength had trouble dealing with someone like him, hell, even Makama herself, the head of the Devil Hunters Association was somewhat accountable to him. 1. You know, there was this great place downtown that sold this amazing strawberry cake and coffee, and boy was it delicious. If you want. 1. Say, when is your next mission there? I'll be glad to taste some of that strawberry cake if you don't mind. Seeing Satoru reluctant to join, Aki couldn't help but resort to his trump card and it worked as well as he thought it would. 1. You know, for someone with such strength, you're quite persuasive. Angel shook his head seeing who was probably the strongest devil hunter, fooled by something as flimsy as food. Oi, how dare you, and how dare I miss out on that amazing strawberry cake, you know, I haven't had sweets in a while. It better be good Aki, or I'm teleporting your ass to the moon. Satoru laughed and stood up enthusiastically with his towel. 1. Aki is right man, the cake is so soft and creamy, it tasted like heaven, besides there's this girl I've met in a shop opposite that, she's pretty hot. Denji who had been quiet all this time finally laughed and backed Aki up. Oh really, and here I was thinking you were in love with Makama. Satoru flashed an interested grin and paid attention to Denji. Bro, I know, like I'm still trying to wrap my head around this whole emotion thing, on one hand, there's Ms. Makama. She's extraordinarily beautiful, she's calm, of a pure heart and her smile. 8. While he daydreamed, Satoru and Angel couldn't help but exchange glances wondering which Makama he was talking about. 1. Makama was many things, in Satoru's opinion. You couldn't deny that she was physically attractive, but you could also definitely not deny that she was evil. Heck, if Pure Hearted had an opposite, that was exactly what she would be described as. Hold on hold on, this new girl, her name is Makama as well. Satoru asked, wanting to clear the confusion in the air. No, her name is Rez, pay attention. 5. Denji cleared his throat and spoke, as Satoru and Angel exchanged looks once more. 1. She's very cute, she likes to take me out, and I think she cares more about Denji than I do. Denji sighed bitterly and sat down. Bro, I think she's a keeper. If she cares more about you than you do, then you better hold on to her like your life depends on it. Satoru patted Denji's shoulder and smiled, offering advice only a big brother would give. Thanks bro, I'll think about it. Denji smiled back. And how do you know so much about love? Have you ever been on a date even before? 1. Aki asked with narrowed eyes. How do I know so much? Well I've watched a lot of K-drama within these few days, and I do consider myself quite knowledgeable now, and about my last date, uh, let's just say it didn't end well. He spoke while picking up his towel and bottle. Anyway, let me go take a shower first, and let's go enjoy a creamy slice of the strawberry cake huo. Satoru laughed and twirled around, before teleporting away like a magician causing the others to sigh. A slash N, I want to thank you guys for the massive support once again. Sorry for not updating in a few days. I haven't really been feeling well, and I have exams as well. But I'll be updating regularly to the best of my ability. Anyway, hope you guys like the chapter. Chapter 35, Res 4. Japan, Kyoto. The afternoon sun sat majestically in the clear blue skies, showering scorching rays of goodness and light onto the earth. 1. Bang. A large explosion set off, followed by the cacophonous sounds of shattered glass and a loud rumble within a small building. The next second, a figure was hurled through the thick walls of the building before crashing into the ground, a small crater forming around her in the process. Her long dark hair was tied into a bun, her visage beautiful, and her eyes, her left eye was dark red, and occasionally glinted with a flash of red light, while her right eye seemed normal and ordinary. She puked blood from her mouth, staining her white shirt a deep shade of pink in the process. Who would have thought such a simple mission would actually turn out to be an annoying and troublesome one? She stood up and wiped the blood from her lips, before gently unsheathing the long katana at her waist. Raising her head, she peered at the monstrous insect-like devil before it that was as massive as a building. It resembled a creature formed from the amalgamation of multiple insects, bearing large blade-like mandibles, as well as long sharp, curled arms like that of a praying mantis, while a pair of membranous wings flapped on its back. Her eyes turned grave, as her red left eye turned sharp. She immediately got into a stance, courtesy of the hell-like training she had been through with the one they called the Mad Dog himself, the self-proclaimed yet recognized as the strongest amongst all devil hunters. 1. The next moment, her blade was covered in an invisible sheath of negative energy, as she steadied and calmed herself, allowing her heart and breathing to move together in a rhythmic tandem. Like an experienced samurai, she took a step forward, about to unleash her strongest attack when she stopped abruptly. Bang! Few seconds later, a force of repulsion exploded forth, from out of nowhere, as the insect-like devil was immediately blasted into a bloody fog, along with more than half of the unoccupied buildings in the area. 
too. She instantly smiled, and sheathed her sword before turning herself around, as if anticipating the arrival of a few old friends. Swoosh. The next moment, a couple of figures mysteriously appeared on the battlefield in an instant, as she walked towards them with a smile. Wow, Hymeno, you've changed a lot. The first to speak out was a silver-haired youth wearing a pair of dark circular glasses while dressed in a black sweatsuit, a dire contrast to how the rest of the youths around him were dressed. 1. He was also the culprit of the previous crushing attack, and his eyes unscrupulously examined the young woman's body from head to toe. Tisk, are you admiring my body, or my progress? She couldn't help but click her tongue with his azure gem-like eyes unceremoniously examining her from top to bottom. I don't see why I can't do both. He let out an evil laugh, although he knew he wasn't really paying much attention to her body. What really interested him was how he could somehow feel the existence of a devil within her body courtesy of that reddish right eye, along with the immense waves of negative energy she was siphoning off. 2. She had become immensely strong but at a terrifying cost. Satoru could sense that her life force dwindle, like a candle in a thunderstorm, about to be snuffed out by the crushing waves. At that point, he wasn't sure if his reverse curse technique would even be able to bring her back which made him sigh inwardly. The path of the honored one was said to a lonely road, and was not for a faint heart. 1. Humph, stingy jerk. She let out a small snort, before a small smile formed on her lips. How can a human have such a pure yet immense output of negative energy? Who is he? And why can't I read his memory? Within her soul, a raspy voice sounded out in a mix of surprise and alert, while peering at the silver-haired youth through her left red eye. He's off limits to you, devil lay a hand on him, and our contract is nullified. Her consciousness retorted with a warning. 1. I see. So he's the one you fancy? Quite unfortunate he doesn't feel that way, he feels nothing, just who is he? 1. The raspy voice sounded out once more, as she let out a sigh inwardly. Anyway, what are you guys doing her anyway? Hymeno smiled and looked at Aki and Denji who seemed to be quarreling over a matter, while Angel stood there unconcerned. Sigh. These punks needed me on a mission, so being the magnanimous person I am, I volunteered to help them out and now we are on our way to enjoy some delicious strawberry cake. I can't wait. Satoru let out an anticipatory laugh, and rubbed his palms together. 1. Can I come along as well? Hymeno asked and looked to him. Of course, but I'm not paying for you. He replied with a yawn which made her clench her teeth in annoyance. I wonder what even attracts me to a stingy jerk like you. She muttered undertone, before shaking her head. 13. And you guys should stop arguing already, let's go eat some of that cake woohoo. Satoru let out a laugh, before he interlocked his fingers and teleported everyone away in an instant. 1. After buying a two large strawberry cakes for himself, Satoru bought one for everyone to enjoy before they walked to the opposite shop to enjoy the cake along with some beverages. Oh my, it's so good. Satoru couldn't help but roar out in orgasmic ecstasy, after taking a bite from the soft cake. Feeling it melt in his mouth, his eyes softened and his cheeks blushed, while wondering to himself, since when did he become such a foodie? 2. He ordered a vanilla cream latte along with the cake as he feasted with incomparable joy. Beside him, Aki, Angel and Hymeno couldn't help but sigh, seeing how engrossed he and Denji had become with eating, although they also couldn't help but inwardly admire the sweetness of the cake. Anyway, Satoru, I heard a rumor a while back, that North Korea will soon be invaded by devil hunters from various countries, won some sort of devil exterminating adventure. Aki spoke out and looked at Satoru who was busily eating. I don't care, and I'm planning on joining if that's what you want to ask. I have lots of better things to use my time for. Satoru chuckled, as Aki and Angel nodded. 1. Unfortunately for us, Ms. Makama might order us to join. He sighed. I suggest you stay, lest you get caught up in some secret conspiracy by the higher-ups of the country. Although I doubt they'll pass up the opportunity to properly and openly subdue North Korea and gain access to their weapon arsenal. It'll probably allow them to stand on equal footing with the Western countries. Satoru continued, while the others nodded. 1. Denji? It's been a while, I missed you so much. Right as they were eating, a figure instantly rushed up and hugged Denji from behind with a large smile hung on her beautiful face. He he he. Denji turned around and awkwardly embraced her back. MMN, UMM Rez, I want to introduce you to my brother, you know the one I told you about. After a few seconds of hugging, Denji separated himself and cleared his throat, before he gestured at Satoru. Huh? Such immense output of energy? Is there a powerful devil lurking nearby? Meanwhile, the moment she appeared, Satoru caught whiff of a powerful energy but he eventually refused to go search for it, until he turned his head and focused his eyes ahead. 1. The next moment, his pupils dilated slightly, as a small smile materialized on his face, although inwardly he wondered why Denji would choose to have such a powerful devil as his girlfriend. Was he being controlled? It didn't seem like that. Was he being threatened? Even more less so. You must be Rez. I've heard a lot about you from Denji. He extended her hand and shook it gently, while intentionally letting a tendril of negative energy drill out, wobbling space around him slightly. 1. The next moment, the joyous expression on the face of the dark-haired beauty immediately morphed into that of surprise, as a hint of anticipation flashed in her eyes, as she let out a smile. Chapter 36, Rez 2, Revelation. Tokyo, Japan. Flashback. Standing on the balcony of her coffee shop, a beautiful black-haired young woman couldn't help but peer at the figures who had exited the cake shop opposite hers with smiles on their faces. Her dark black eyes examined each and every one of them swiftly and identified them easily, before her gaze finally landed on the silver-haired youth, wearing dark black circular glasses while dressed in a black sweatsuit. 3. He was quite the figure now, others even referred to him as a legendary devil hunter. Being able to wipe out hordes of devils as well as multiple arch devils in one attack wasn't something to scoff at. He was such a troublesome figure to the extent that, even multiple arch devils among her own circle felt threatened by his existence. Not only had she been sent here to acquire the heart of the chainsaw man, her job also included fatally injuring or even killing the silver-haired youth. We finally meet Gojo Satoru, let's see if you are as strong as the rumors portray you to be. 2. She smiled and walked out into the main hall of the shop, while her eyes cautiously examined him, even down to his most minutest movements. Not a single opening to take advantage of. Also the sheer output of negative energy emanating from his body is no joke. How interesting, this is going to be even more stressful than I originally thought. 2. She mused to herself, put up the widest and cutest smile she could muster and jogged to the messy blonde-haired youth who sat by his side. Right as she was about to hug Denji, she felt the body of the silver-haired youth tense up for a moment, as his azure gem-like eyes dilated for a moment, before he calmed himself. 
Had he sensed me? Did I blow my cover? She couldn't help but wonder, as she hugged Denji who introduced them to each other, and then he extended his palm for a handshake. It was in that moment that she felt the incomparable power hidden deep within his body. She knew she had been found out, seeing him intentionally leak out a tendril of negative energy from his body, but what surprised her the most was that, the tendril of energy seemed to command absolute obedience from surrounding space and dimension, which made her speechless for a moment. 1. Contemplating whether to attack or not, her body tensed up, while still maintaining the smile on her face. Denji has told me a lot about you Rez. He suddenly spoke out with a chuckle, before he freed his hand and returned to eating his cake as if nothing else mattered to him. Was it that he hadn't noticed her? It was highly unlikely, and the tendril of negative energy he unleashed was evidence of that. Or was it that he knew but didn't care one bit? Did he think himself superior to her in all aspects? 3. Such thought flickered across the mind of the young woman as she took a seat beside Denji with a cute smile on her face, while occasionally glancing at the silver-haired youth adjacent him. Sigh. Denji, Denji. 2. Satoru couldn't help but sigh inwardly. He didn't know why misfortune always seemed to accompany Denji. He could tell that Denji was definitely feeling some sort of emotion towards the devil as evidenced by how he interacted, smiled, and even looked at her. 1. Of course, not all devils were evil. However, even he couldn't tell whether she felt any sort of emotion toward him. He could probably take her down right now if he wanted to. But will Denji be okay with that? What if it turned out that both of them really did have feelings for each other? He didn't want to go down that path and lose the trust and affection of the only person who probably only mattered to him in this world. 2. Sighing, he took a sip of his cream latte and came up with a conclusion. He wasn't going to interfere in Denji's love life, however, he was going to protect him from the shadows should the need arise. At the very least, he was happy Denji wasn't going out with someone like Makama. If that happened even he wouldn't be able to rest easy knowing how cruel and cunning she could be. 4. Being a big brother is one of the hardest things to do in the world. Satoru cast an eye at Denji and Rez who seemed to be lovingly chatting with each other, although he still sensed her gaze lingering on him, as if contemplating whether he knew about her secret identity or not. 2. Now that I think about it, you've really grown stronger since the last time I saw you Hymeno. Angel suddenly spoke, while casting a glance at Hymeno who had her eyes occasionally gazing at the silver-haired handsome devil sitting right across her. 13. Not just you, it seems you all have gotten some sort of power-ups one way or the other. He continued while glancing at Aki as well. What did you expect? We definitely couldn't allow ourselves to be left behind far in the dust by him. Hymeno was the first to reply, as she rubbed her forehead in exasperation, remembering the tough training Kishive had put she and Aki through, although it was nowhere near the level of pain Denji and power had gone through. However, even with all the massive power UPS, we've still been left far behind in the dust by him, so much that we can't even see his shadow anymore. Aki sighed and clenched his fists while staring at Satoru who looked unconcerned at the hearing of their plight. Piece of advice from Miyaki, don't try comparing yourself to him. He's on a whole other level. 3. Angel replied bluntly, while even Rez was taken aback by his response, wondering how a fiend almost as strong as an archdevil could have such a high evaluation of a simple human. He he he, you're right I'm just that cool. Satoru couldn't help but wink at them, as Angel and Aki rolled their eyes while Hymeno blushed slightly. 17. Even though I'm extraordinarily strong and infinitely cool, I do believe the human potential is infinite, and what we can achieve if we put our minds to it is unimaginable. 1. Satoru added, while spinning his fork in midair using the power of convergence and divergence. 5. Humph, easy for you to say, but not everyone is born the ability to teleport or fly or create massive energy blasts as powerful as nuclear explosions. Hymeno harumphed before she took a sip of her coffee. I know, I know, but that's what makes me look cool isn't it? Satoru would never miss an opportunity to show off, while the others couldn't help but roll their eyes at his words. Like I said before, it should be possible for humans to acquire superhuman abilities by learning to materialize and manipulate the negative energy within their bodies. It might sound crazy, but hypothetically speaking it should be possible. He added, I've tried doing it many times. I can feel this fiery energy inside of me, but no matter how many times I try, I can't reach it. Aki sighed, and even Satoru raised a brow, clearly intrigued by Aki's confession. In order to access negative energy as a human, you should be willing to embrace the dark side of yourself or the negative aspects of humanity. You should be able to attune yourself towards negativity, embracing your inner demons. Now tell me Aki, are you willing to embrace your inner demons? Satoru cleared his throat and spoke, while Aki's eyes widened at the spark of revelation. Even Rez who was pretending not to listen to the conversation couldn't help but look at him incredulously. Is he planning on teaching humanity to embrace negativity and materialize negative energy? If that happens then it would very well be the end of the era of devils. 8. Although she masqueraded as naive young girl, she was terrifyingly intelligent, being able to become an archdevil with not only her strength but her wits. She instantly understood what Satoru was trying hint at, while her face couldn't help but contort. Are you okay Rez? Denji noticing her change in facial expression couldn't help but ask in concern. Don't worry about me Denji, I'm fine just cramps. She faked a painful smile, while Denji lovingly patted her back. Anyway, I'm not going to go about preaching this to everyone I think humanity is fine just the way it is and devils are a necessary evil to balance the order of the world. 1. Satoru added while taking another bite of the strawberry cake, leaving Aki, Hymeno, and even Angel in deep contemplation. A slash N, hope you guys enjoy the chapter. Also, an archdevil is a class I came up with for devils on the level of Rez and the Missile Devil. While devils like Makama and the Gun Devil are immensely stronger and can overpower them with ease, even they pale against the Four Horsemen of Destruction. 2. Anyway, I love the support, and also can you guys help out with new abilities for the MC, I think I've fried my brain enough at this point. Chapter 37, Battle of the Strongest Eye, Tokyo, Japan. A handsome silver-haired youth walked into a hotel dressed in an all-black long-necked jacket, pants, and boots. His eyes were wrapped in a black blindfold, adding a touch of mystery to his disposition, while the gentle smile on his face couldn't help but attract gazes from everywhere onto himself. Which floor was he in? I think I forgot, let me check. 
He walked right to the counter, taking measured steps while his small smile still hung on his face and approached the young woman behind the counter who was instantly charmed by him. Excuse me, I'm supposed to be having lunch here with someone, but I seem to have forgotten what floor dash. Mr. Gojo, he has been waiting for you. Right this way, as he was putting in his request, a cool and calm voice sounded out behind him, as he turned around and saw a middle-aged man in a butler suit standing behind him respectfully. Ah, oh, sorry for the inconvenience. He smiled and winked towards the young woman who blushed fiercely and responded with a stammer. I it's a all right sir. He couldn't help but chuckle as he was like away with the butler into an elevator. Ding! The elevator bell rang out while its doors opened up, signaling its ascent to the fourth floor of the hotel, as the youth and the middle-aged man walked out with dignified expressions. Here we are sir. The butler bowed slightly after reaching the second room on the fourth floor numbered 108, and gestured for him to go in alone. Thank you very much. Satoru smiled and nodded to the butler before he raised his head and entered with a dignified expression. Upon entry, he saw a middle-aged man with a menacing scar on his left cheek sitting behind a long dining table filled with exquisite dishes. The man was slowly sipping wine while smoking a cigar with a relaxed expression while indulging in his own memories. We meet again, Gojo Satoru. Seeing his guest walk in, the man stood unhurriedly, before he extended his hand for a handshake. A simple gesture, although the number of people who have received this level of respect from the man could be counted on one hand. We meet again Kishive. Satoru smiled and extended his hand as well for the firm handshake before he took his seat opposite Kishive. It all looks so delicious. Did he plan all of this to put in a request or a favor from me? Satoru couldn't help but click his tongue in amazement, seeing the neatly arranged and well-cooked fancy cuisine before him. Anyway, we have important matters to discuss, so let's eat first. Kishive gestured, as Satoru nodded and both of them began feasting. A while later, both of them had eaten to their fill, as they sipped expensive wine, while several staff walked in and packed all the used dishes away. The room service in this hotel is very good. I should probably come here more often. Satoru chuckled while sipping his wine. It's not ordinary room service. I especially ordered everything because of you. Kishive spoke with an apathetic expression, as if he didn't know what it meant to smile. I don't know whether to be flattered or thankful. Satoru gently twirled his wine glass while peering at Kishive. Now, let's get down to business, I've been the strongest devil hunter for as long as I can remember, but having you as a successor brings joy to my heart. He stood up and slowly took off his brown trench coat, before folding his sleeves and took out a short katana. My old bones have been itching for one last good fight, please make this old man's wish come true, and after that, we'll get down to business. Kishive got into a stance, while his eyes dangerously peered at the silver-haired youth who still had a smile on his face and was still holding his wine glass. I figured you were going to ask for a battle. Guess what, I came here for a glorious battle as well. The former strongest devil hunter vs the current strongest devil hunter. Satoru smiled, placed down the glass and walked to the empty space in the hall along with Kishive, while their gazes never left one another. However, I could finish you in one attack if I truly wanted, but where would be the fun in that? Satoru slowly pulled up his blindfold, revealing his azure gem like right eye, and cracked his knuckles. Let's see if you truly live up to your reputation as the current strongest devil hunter. Kishive let his short katana drop to the ground, before cracking his knuckles. Like seasoned fighters, both of them had a tactical understanding. In a fight like this, the only way to win wasn't through using some fancy moves, but to have your opponent beaten down and surrender under the strength of your fists. An all-out brawl, as many Westerners referred to it. But who was going to prevail? The old generation, or the young generation? Boom, in the span of a second, both of them moved at untraceable speed, and clashed in an epic showdown, fist to fist, as a massive shockwave erupted from the mere collision of their fist. His fists aren't just strengthened by negative energy, there's something more. Kishive analyzed, feeling the raw power, as well as an immense force crash into his body at the point of impact. Not bad for an old man. Satoru chuckled, while his six eyes gleamed ferociously. Bang, bang, asterisk. The next second, the two fighters clashed once more, exchanging attacks at immense speeds. Satoru seemed to have the upper hand, as he unleashed fist after fist and kick after kick, as the old man, although could dodge with ease, seemed to find trouble countering some of the attacks. Smiling ferociously, Kishai bolted forward at immense speeds, and smashed his fist forward, while the air exploded from his pressure with which the fist generated. Satoru didn't cower, he responded in kind, twirling like an experienced parkour artist, he blasted his fist forward as another shockwave exploded from the collision. This time, Kishai was hurled back a few meters, before he stabilized himself. Without giving the opponent time to rest, Satoru blasted forward, before unleashing multiple punch and kick combos at immense speeds. Although most of it were blocked by the old man, he was still hurt from the ones that managed to slip through his defenses. Flashing a bloody smile, he ignored his defense and unleashed multiple punch combos effectively countering Satoru's heavy kicks. Grasping a slip-up in one of Satoru's attacks, he unleashed a punch with all of his might, which blasted right into Satoru's chest. However the young devil hunter was unrelenting, he swallowed the blood that wanted to spurt out of his mouth with a smile, before he unleashed a 360-degree spinning kick which hurled the old man into a pillar. What an experienced old man. How was he able to land that attack? Satoru's smile never left his face, although his eye grew a bit grave. Your defense isn't impenetrable after all. Although your reflexes are near godly levels, once I manage to trick them, you'll be vulnerable to my attacks. The old man slid down the pillar, and wiped the drop of blood at the corner of his lips. Aside from that bitch, you're the only one who's managed to make me bleed in close combat, let's see if you can do it again. Kishive got into a karate stance and readied himself for round two. Satoru couldn't help but smile before he got into his favorite Jeet Kune Do stance. Throughout the fight or the first round, he had been relying on just his right eye to outclass the old man, but it turned out that the old man had seemingly adapted and improved mid-battle and had even found a way to counter his impeccable reflexes and reaction speed. How terrifying was that? This is going to be even more fun. Satoru smiled before he completely took off his blindfold, unwilling to underestimate his opponent any longer. You may have found a way to counter me old man, but I'll take you down before you can deal any decisive damage to me. He smiled as Kishive nodded with a bloody grin. Boom, the next moment, both of them clashed once more, using any or all of their bodies as weapons, while trying to take each other down in the process. Moving at immense speeds, just the shockwaves from the collision of their attacks shattered glasses within multiple rooms in the hotel, while destroying several pillars and walls in the process. Chapter 38, Who Won? 
2. You may have found a way to counter me, old man, but I'll take you down before you can deal any decisive damage to me. 1. Satoru laughed and completely took off his blindfold while Kishai flashed a bloody grin. 1. Boom. The next moment, both of them clashed once more, using their fists, legs, and knees as weapons, unleashing immense deadly force, while trying to take each other down in the process. Kishive has taken massive hits, however, the old seasoned devil hunter held his ground, even against the strongest of the current era. He unleashed a left hook to which the silver-haired youth sidestepped and dodged, before he unleashed a crazy right hook followed by a whirlwind kick. Satoru sidestepped and dodged like right hook, before he tilted himself posteriorly, narrowly dodging the whirlwind kick which seemed to directly follow up after the punch. The next moment, he unleashed his own whirlwind kick which smashed right into Kishive's body, however, right as the old man was about to be hurled away, he executed a backhand punch which sent Satoru flying as well. Kishive stabilized himself after being hurled through a pillar, however, before he could even react, Satoru arrived before him in an instant, and unleashed a side punch, a right hook and followed up with another whirlwind kick, a terrifying combo was also one of his favorites. However, just as Satoru's whirlwind kick smashed into his body, Kishive unleashed a nasty side punch, which knocked the breath of Satoru, as both of them were hurled back once more. You're tenacious, old man. Satoru couldn't help laugh, while he praised the tenacity of the old man before him, after stabilizing himself and wiping the trickle of blood near his lips, taking direct hits just to be able to land a couple of hits. I've never seen anyone fight in such an unbridled manner before. Satoru couldn't help but furrow his brows while he spoke. Kishive, against all odds, had been able to land a couple of hits onto his body, while he seemed to be taking direct hits from him as if it was nothing. At this point, Satoru couldn't help but admit that Kishive was really a troublesome opponent to face, even though he was only human. His terrifying battle instincts and ability to adapt to any style of combat was shocking in the very least. Tisk. They don't call me Mad Dog for no reason. Kishai forced himself to his feet, feeling his bones creak. The strongest devil hunter of the current era, Gojo Satoru was strong, immensely strong, and experienced even in close combat. To Kishai, Satoru's punches felt like a metal dumbbell getting smashed into his body at high speed. And even with all of his strength, he had only managed to cause some shallow wounds on the youth's body, which was a testament to his durability and endurance. 1. Boom. Without any weight, they bolted forward and clashed once more, as more and more shockwaves erupted. Exchanging move after move after move, they accelerated at immense speeds. Satoru seemed to have improved drastically, dodging Kishive's moves with relative ease, while his attacks got even more powerful. Meanwhile, Kishive seemed to be on his last drags. His strategy of taking hits and answering in kind was taking a toll on his body. The most surprising things was that, Satoru seemed to have adapted to his current fighting style, as he unleashed unpredictable attacks which left no room for no counter. Before Kishive could even realize, a fist smashed into his face, followed by another to his ribs, then a kick, and another and another. Satoru was moving so fast, even Kishive with all of his experience couldn't track his movements. He unleashed combo after combo, as Kishive crossed his arms before his face to protect himself. The next moment, a massive force smashed into his body, and hurled him a few meters away. The fight has been enlightening. Satoru stretched his back. He had emerged victorious in the head-on clash. Maybe it was because Kishive was well past his prime, and his remaining life force was vastly diminished. Satoru didn't feel any joy after winning the fight, mostly due to the fact that he didn't know what would have happened if he had fought the mad dog in his prime. However, even they had been allowed to use techniques, then it would have been a whole different story. Wait, one last attack. Kishive's voice sounded out, as he walked out of rubble with a bloodied smile. A last attack with any technique allowed. He spoke and picked up his short blade from the ground, and stretched his back with a groan. Satoru couldn't help but frown. Kishive didn't seem injured or affected by his attacks. He knew how much power he had unleashed in that last round. It wasn't a power a defenseless human could tank with his physical body no matter how trained it was. That last round was extremely dangerous for me. Kishive seriously spoke and wiped the blood on his nose and lips, while gazing at Satoru who had a frown on his face. Are you sure you want us to use techniques? You might die instantly old man. Satoru shook his head and readied himself. Everyone had his or her secrets and he wasn't going to pry into Kishive's, not that he cared though. Boom. Without warning, Kishive's body exploded forth with even greater than speed than before, as he slashed his blade towards Satoru's neck in a split second. However, the silver-haired youth disappeared when the blade was a few inches from his neck. Appearing behind Kishive in the blink of an eye, an ephemeral blue and red light seemed to flash behind him, as Kishive's body was instantly pulled forward by an attractive force, before Satoru smashed his fist forward coated in the red light. 1. Before the fist could smash into Kishive's body, the ephemeral blue light that was pulling his body seemed to fuse together with the red light on Satoru's fist, as purplish light exploded on contact, along with flashes of lightning. Kishive hadn't even been able to react to the change of events, as the destructive force from the purplish light crashed into his chest almost instantaneously, along with the force from Satoru's fist, creating the occurrence of superimposition of forces. Boom, slash, asterisk. Kishive's chest was immediately destroyed from the attack, as the entire floor of the building came crushing down. What the dash the next moment, Satoru whose figure was visible stood alone with a frown on his face. The next second, blood dripped down his neck, before a long slash opened up right in his neck. 2. He couldn't help but be shocked at the turn of events. His neck had actually been stealthily slashed by Kishive and he had not even noticed it coming. He had underestimated his opponent and had not even bothered using his infinity and was no paying dearly for it. Blood spurted out of his nose and mouth, before a wide grin materialized in his face. Chapter 39, Bomb Devil 5 The dust died down completely, revealing a room that had been destroyed to the utmost. Soon, a silver-haired figure came into view, his face serious while traces of a smile hung on his lips. What the dash just as he was about to move, a long gash on his neck opened up with an incessant flow of blood. Stupefied by the wound his eyes remained still for a moment, and he coughed out blood and staggered. 1. He was shocked. Although he had purposefully turned off his infinity in order to complete his final attack, he was still shocked at how his opponent had been able to split his throat without being noticed by the six eyes. Wiping the blood off his nose and mouth, he proceeded to channel positive energy, as a cool energy unlike the previous erratic one gently brushed over his body, completely healing all of his previous wounds, as the bleeding gash on his neck closed up instantly. Sigh. You're still alive even after I slashed your neck open? You're the tenacious one. 
Suddenly an old voice sounded out, as he turned around only to see the his opponent, Kishiv, the mad dog, the previous strongest devil hunter, sitting on a rock smoking a cigar while staring at the wound on his neck which had effectually healed. Kishiv at this point was on his last drags. His right arm was bent to an unnatural angle, while a huge portion of his torso was gone, leaving behind only a heart which beat in an irregular pattern. I can heal you if you want. Satoru offered, but the old man shook his head and shrugged. I'll be fine, I have some tricks up my sleeve you know, how else would I be able to become the strongest in a world ruled by unimaginable powers? He sighed and closed his eyes. The next moment, all of his wounds began to close up just like Satoru. It's positive energy. Satoru couldn't help but raise a brow. He had been too engrossed in the fight earlier he had failed to notice such a small detail. It's not coming from his body, it should be. Satoru couldn't help but examine further with the six eyes. The positive energy wasn't part of the energy Kishiv was siphoning off his contracted devils. It seemed to be coming directly from another source within his body, as if an otherworldly presence was hidden within his body and was crudely using the positive energy to heal him up. After a while, Kishiv was back to normal, although, he looked even paler and skinnier than before, while his eyes seemed to have sunken in even more. Using his life force as a medium of exchange to contract whatsoever devil was in charge of that. Satoru mused and perched himself on the fragments of a shattered pillar. No wonder you weren't the least bit worried about my attacks. Satoru spoke out first, while slowly taking out a white cloth from his pockets and blindfolding his eyes. Those eyes of yours are really troublesome. Kishiv spoke with a puff. That single last attack had cost me weeks of studying your techniques, at the very least I had to make you drop that stupid invisible barrier around your body. And even without that, you proved me wrong once more, and I almost died. Kishiv sighed once more and said, You're truly terrifying, old man. Satoru smiled and said, That's quite a high appraisal coming from someone as strong as you. Kishiv raised a brow. It's not a high appraisal, it's the highest. Satoru nodded with a laugh. Anyway, now down to business, what do you think about Makama? He asked straightforward, not beating about the bush. Fine, I'll admit, she's hot, but I don't think about her. Satoru joked around, but seeing the serious look on Kishiv's face he cleared his throat and continued with his statement. 5. I received a piece of information from an anonymous source, and after thorough information, I found out. Kishiv paused and reached out for a small piece of folded paper in his pocket and tossed it to Satoru. That the mysterious disappearance of the gun devil is linked to her one way or the other. His eyes trailed on the youth's visage, waiting for a response. Wait. On two assassination attempt on me, and brother's lives, the assailants did mention that the gun devil wanted me, and my brother's heart, why is that, and is it related to her? Satoru couldn't help but clench his fist silently, as a murderous smile formed on his face. If Makama was truly behind all of this, then he would fulfill the promise he made to her. 1. I don't know why you're involved, but I might have a clue about your brother. Kishai flicked the burned-out cigarette from his mouth. In the past, when I was a young devil hunter, there was once a frightening existence known as the Chainsaw Devil, an entity feared by both devils and humans. For some reason, the part of my memories about that time seems to be in shambles, but what I remember is the Chainsaw Devil was extremely strong and one day it disappeared. 3. Kishai massaged his forehead and spoke. If by any chance, the devil that merged with your brother is the Chainsaw Devil, then his potential is limitless, and I would understand the allure of his heart for most devils. He ended his words with a sigh. I don't know much else, but Makama might be plotting something big, and we've got to stop her. I need your help. Kishai added. As tempting as that sounds, I'll have to refuse your offer. Satoru spoke and suddenly stood up, brushing the dust of his clothes. I fly solo. Besides don't worry about Makama old man. I made a promise to her, and I intend on keeping it. He interlocked his fingers ready to teleport away. 1. What do you plan on doing? Kishiv suddenly asked. All I can say is, she won't be around for very long. Leaving those words behind his body vanished in a split second, leaving Kishiv alone by himself. Good luck then, you'll need it. He mumbled, as he watched the place where Satoru's figure had disappeared from. Meanwhile within the city, several citizens were escaping with for their lives, while shrill screams reverberated through the area along with the cacophonous rhythms of explosion. A black SUV instantly zoomed across the city roads in a rush, as the car dodged multiple explosions being fired at it. A moment later, a familiar beautiful young woman with black hair walked out of an exploding building with a smile on her face, while glancing at the SUV which was speeding along the roads. Gojo Satoru, let's see if you'll continue to hide after I rip out your brother's heart. Her voice was laid with a murderous tone, as she waved her hand happily. The next second, her body instantly blasted into the sky accompanied by an explosion, as she broke the sonic barrier with ease and chased after the SUV. 5. Chapter 40, Enemies Meet, Against the Bomb Devil 2, Tokyo, Japan. Arc. Parts of the city of Tokyo was in shambles, with buildings and other structures destroyed by explosions. Although many lives had been lost, the rest of the citizens could not muster any courage to fight back, as they helplessly run for their lives in order to escape the nightmarish phenomenon. A black SUV sped off into the distance, with multiple figures seated within. Worry, shock and fear were etched on their faces, as they tried their very best to escape the walking natural disaster that seemed to follow them wherever they went. Meanwhile, a beautiful young woman walked out of an exploding building with a smile on her face. On her neck was a necklace, and on it was an object that resembled a bomb pin. 1. Gojo Satoru. Let's see how long you will hide for after I rip out your brother's heart. After careful planning, she had decided to go through with her plans and mission, deeming the current strongest devil hunter as undeserving of his status and weak. With a smile on her face, her body instantly blasted off into the sky, accompanied by an explosion which cracked the ground she previously stood on. Devil Hunters Association HQ. Makama was silently seated in her office, with her pupils glued to the TV screen as she watched the crazy battle unfold between the chainsaw devil and another devil with a head shaped like a bomb. The only sound that occasionally reverberated within the room, was the sound of the tip of her pen which she rhythmically tapped against the table, while a gentle smile hung on her face. Even with his interference, everything was still going according to her plan, and it wouldn't be long until she achieved her lifelong dream. At that point would he even be strong enough to threaten her? She was planning on breaking down his spirit and soul, by slowly taking away everything and everyone he ever loved. After all, no human, no matter how powerful was immune to emotions and feelings. 1. This was his destiny as her rival, the only man to have ever aroused that peculiar feeling of helplessness within her. 5. 
Swoosh, a silver-haired youth mysteriously appeared right before her with the swooshing sound of air, just as she had expected. His handsome face was devoid of its usual cocky smile, rather adorned with a slightly serious look, and his azure gem-like eyes were free of their blindfolds, as they glinted murderously while glaring at her. His fists were clenched within the pockets of his jackets as a thick bloodthirsty aura diffused off his body in waves. You have finally shown up, my rival. She opened her mouth and spoke while her eyes peered into his, fierce stare down, which caused negative energy to erupt along with shockwaves, due to the fierce clash between their auras. Satora didn't speak a word. With but a simple glance, a crushing force erupted and crashed into her body, completely destroying her office, along with a part of the building. Makama walked out of the explosion completely unharmed, with her gentle smile replaced by a serious look. With a wave of her hand, matter itself seemed to warp, as a part of the building was ripped off forcefully, by an unknown force, before it crashed into the figure of the silver-haired youth who stood with an unconcerned look. Boom, the building itself collapsed, however, the silver-haired youth walked out of the point of impact completely unharmed with one hand out of his pocket. Seeing his approaching figure, Makama's expression couldn't help but tighten her gaze. Watching him in a battle and fighting him were two different things. I thought I had overestimated your capabilities, however it seems my overestimation was still an underestimation. She couldn't help but smile, before she held out a finger in a gun-like position. Watching his apathetic face intently, an unknown feeling slowly crept up her spine. She didn't know whether it was fear or shock or surprise. It'd been a while since she had met an opponent like him who could stimulate such a feeling from within her. 4. Satora didn't utter a word. He only held out two of his fingers and faced off against Makama. Both of them were completely unconcerned about the lives of several devil hunters who were still in the building and were currently scurrying away for their lives. At this point, the only thought on their minds was to take each other out. Cursed Technique Reversal An extremely dense red sphere of energy materialized at the tip of his fingers, as red light encompassed his figure. 1. Makama's expression couldn't help but tighten seeing the dense sphere of positive energy ready to take her out. Readying her own attack, her negative energy began bubbling within her body, as an invisible energy gathered at the tip of her fingers. Satoru was about to unleash his attack, when he immediately broke out of his stupor. His eyes widening and pupils dilating in an instant, as his six eyes picked up Denji, Angel, Aki, and several others' energy signature from miles away. Slowly turning his head towards the window, he glared intently at the city of Tokyo which had now turned into an explosion field. Sigh. What a waste. He immediately cancelled out his technique, glared intently at his nemesis and teleported away, leaving a surprised Makama alone who kept gazing at the area he once stood. He was going to kill me, but why do I feel this, loneliness? Her eyes couldn't help but tighten, as she instantly felt the previous unknown feeling that accompanied his presence die down within her soul. 19. Meanwhile, within another part of the city, blood was splattered all over, as a couple of figures were engaged in a heated battle with a troublesome devil. A black-haired youth was instantly hurled through a building by an explosion from the devil who had a bomb-shaped head, before it punched out with a force akin to multiple exploding bombs. 1. Boom! An auburn-haired youth and a young woman with pale red hair were instantly sent flying as well while puking blood, as the devil walked towards the body of the chainsaw devil which had been bisected into two, separating its torso from its lower body. Taking steady steps, the devil reverted to its human form, as she eyed the unmoving dark-haired young woman whose body was covered in burns, still holding onto her blade and the man with a shark head whose lower body had been exploded into bits by one attack from her. Nothing of this would have happened Denji, if you had just given me your heart. I wouldn't have had to injure any of your friends and would have left in peace. Standing beside the corpse of the chainsaw devil she uttered and extended her fingers which morphed into sharp claws. With a smile moved her hand forwards, ready to rip out the heart of the chainsaw devil, when a red light instantly illuminated the area following which an immense repulsive force instantly blasted forth, hurling her body through multiple buildings at once. The next second, Satoru appeared with a swoosh, holding onto multiple blood bags as he burst them open and poured them right into the chainsaw devil's opened mouth. The next moment, its body began to reconnect, as Satoru sighed and walked to the dark-haired unconscious young woman who had sustained multiple third degree burns. Stretching forth his palm, a cool energy spread all over her body, and within a few moments, a new skin formed all over her body, as the burned skin fell as if she was shedding skin. Ugh, what took you so long man? Aki walked out of a destroyed building with a bloodied face and injured body before sighing in relief, seeing Satoru finally on the battlefield. Soon, Angel and Power also walked out with injuries and regrouped, while both of them simultaneously sighed seeing him finally arrived. Boom, the bomb devil appeared in a flaming explosion, as she peered towards the silver-haired youth. I was willing to leave you alone, thinking maybe, just maybe, you truly had a shred of feelings towards Denji. 2. Satoru began to walk forward while his negative energy bubbled within him, and exploded forth. If he's willing to give me his heart, I'm planning on giving him mine. A shrill laughter reverberated from the bomb devil, as it readied itself for an attack. Wrong answer. Satoru grinned murderously, before he waved his palm, causing an extremely powerful attractive force to blast out with potent destructive power. 3. A slash N. Don't know if you guys would like this chapter. Man face palming light skin tone man face palming light skin tone man face palming light skin tone please forgive me. Chapter 41. Final battle against the bomb devil 2. A part of me wanted to believe that you truly loved Denji and that you wanted to be with him. I guess I was wrong. Satoru calmly walked forward, and with each step, the amount of negative energy bubbling out of his body seemed to double by the moment. 1. If he's willing to give me his heart, I'll give him mine. The bomb devil laughed, before her body bolted forward, propelled by an explosion as she shattered the sonic barrier in an instant. Wrong answer. 3. Satoru's eyes gleamed with incomparable fury. Holding out his fingers, an extremely powerful repulsive force burst out of his body, accompanied by flashes of red ephemeral light. 1. Before the bomb devil could even reach his position, the destructive force instantly crashed into her body, hurling her away with massive force while simultaneously crushing everything in its path. 2. Are you guys okay? Satoru couldn't help but turn around, and saw Hymeno, Aki, Power, and Angel watching him intently. She's Denji's dash. I'm well aware. Aki wanted to try to explain the situation, however, Satoru shook his head. He had known Rez was a devil since the beginning, and could have destroyed her at that time if he wanted to. If you knew she was a devil, why didn't you exterminate her right from the beginning? Are you aware of how many lives have been lost due to your recklessness? Hymeno couldn't help but blurt out in grief. The number of deaths she had witnessed today far too countable and could not be overlooked. 
Even Aki couldn't help but sigh, as he clenched his fists tightly. He had similarly witnessed multiple deaths in the span of a few hours to the extent that, although he had become numb to it, he couldn't help but silently grieve in his heart. What do their deaths have to do with me? I'm not some messiah. If you care so much about them, become strong and then protect them with your own strength. Satoru's words echoed, stunning Aki and Haimeno at once. 22. He he's right, you're worse than a devil. Haimeno shuddered before she turned around and bolted away with tears in her eyes. 2. Satoru couldn't help but sigh. He might have been a little too tough on her. She was going to get the reality check one way or the other. Having overwhelming power didn't mean you could save everyone. At best, you could only save those dear to you, the others didn't matter. 3. He knew he was no hero, neither was he a villain of some sort. Someone like him unabided by one rule, to do whatever the fuck he wanted. He wasn't one to harm people, neither was he one to go out of his way to save everyone. 3. I thought the strongest devil hunter in the world would have some sense of heroism, but it turns out, you're even worse than the devils. 1. A shrill laughter resounded, as the bomb devil reappeared in a burst of flames. Die. She immediately blasted forward and hurled a punch forward, backed the power of several explosions. Satoru only stood still, watching with amusement, as her attack smashed into the invisible wall before his body. 1. What the why can't I touch him? She continued to unleash multiple punches, however the results remained the same. Seeing as how her attacks never seemed to reach the opponent, she couldn't help but roar inwardly. Deciding on another plan of attack, she retreated several meters away and stretched forth her palm. Instantly, a dense flame energy sphere materialized, resembling the condensation of multiple exploding warheads. With a mere flick, the orb blasted towards Satoru's figure, before a large explosion set off releasing immense shockwaves that cracked the ground and ripped through several buildings. That was easy. After the dust died down, she immediately reverted to her human form and smirked, seeing no signs of her opponent. 2. Who are you? Calling easy. How we the next moment, her body tensed up, as a chuckle sounded out from behind her. She immediately turned around only to see her opponent standing completely unharmed with a slight smile on his face. Not even his clothes had been affected by the explosions, nor were the people standing behind him. You think you're untouchable. At this point, she couldn't help but roar out in fury. Her strongest attack had been tanked by the opponent as if it was nothing. At such a point, even the most seasoned warriors would be anxious and show signs of fear. I could have ended you back then if I wanted to, I'm surprised you thought you could beat me. Before Satoru ended his statement, his body disappeared mysteriously and in the next moment, a palm instantly smashed into the abdomen of the bomb devil, as blood burst out of her mouth. 1. What is this? How can a regular strike from him be so overpowering? Who is he? Is he still human? Thoughts ran across her mind, stimulated by the immense pain and force that suddenly crashed into her body in a split second, leaving her no time to react. There's more where that came from. Satoru chuckled, before he proceeded to repeatedly smash his palm into the poor devil's abdomen, drawing blood from her with each hit, before he hurled her flying with a spinning back kick. 2. At first I was angry, but now I'm just disappointed. I really thought you and Denji really had something going on, oh well. 1. Curse technique reversal. Watching the figure of the bomb devil being hurled away by the force from his attack, Satoru couldn't help but chuckle, before lifted a finger. The next moment, a dense red sphere of energy materialized from a singularity, coalesced on top of his finger, accompanied by the shattering of space as if it were a mirror. 1. Red. The energy sphere immediately exploded, accompanied by an illumination of red ephemeral light, as an extremely powerful repulsive force blasted forth, hurling her body through several buildings while ripping them apart in the process. 1. Sensing something, Satoru turned around only to see Denji staring at him with mixed feelings. Are you planning on killing her? He voices out, as Satoru merely raised an eyebrow. 1. What do you think I'm planning on doing? Rewarding her. He smiled sarcastically, as Denji sighed. I like her. 10. Denji uttered with his head down. Deep down he found it hard to believe that Rez was a devil and tried to kill him. He truly felt something for her, and it hurt. If he wasn't the chainsaw devil, his whole existence would have been an insignificant speck in this world filled with unknown powers. 1. Oi Satoru, why does everyone want the chainsaw man's heart, but no one wants Denji's heart? 13. Denji uttered before burying his face in his arms. Satoru couldn't help but sigh. Although he didn't exactly know what Denji was going through, at the very least, he was there for him. It's alright man. Aki patted Denji's back while trying to comfort him. Satoru, can you do me a favor? He lifted his head and asked. What is it? Satoru nodded while taking out a whole piece of cloth and blindfolding his eyes. Can you not kill her? He asked, which made the silver-haired youth pause for a moment, as he glanced at Aki and Angel. 1. Are you sure? Satoru couldn't help but raise a brow. He didn't want to be called worse than a devil by Haimeno again. Yes, I have a plan to subdue her. Denji smiler and looked over, seeing as they were near a river. 1. You do understand that anything she does after this will be on your plate right? Satoru couldn't help but confirm. I understand. Denji nodded as Satoru sighed once more. Fine. Boom. The next moment, another explosion set off, as the bomb devil reappeared once more. This time, her body looked haggard and one of her arms were missing. 1. He he he, you look good. Satoru couldn't help but chuckle, and the next moment, with a wave of his hand, an invisible force suddenly seized her body and pulled her towards Denji. Without wasting any time, Denji instantly bolted forward before he grabbed her and jumped into the river with her, as Satoru shook his head. Is he going to be alright? Aki flashed a curious smile, while Angel merely rolled his eyes. If all it took to take such a troublesome devil down was to drown it, why did they have to suffer? 1. Let's leave, he'll be alright. Satoru merely waved his hand and teleported away leaving the others to sigh. What an anticlimactic fight that was. Aki couldn't help but laugh as he and Angel walked into the distance. A slash N. The reason why Gojo decided to kill Makama in the previous chapter was because of the promise he made to her in the previous chapters. He had made it clear to her that the moment she tried to harm someone close to him, it would be game over for her. Chapter 42, Temporary Hiatus 4 Hey guys, it's the author here, and I want to make a sad and unfortunate announcement. I won't be updating for a week's due to some complications with school and work, but I promise to be back with some chapters after everything is said and done. 10. I'm not dropping the FF, in fact, we've got a few more arcs to cover, so please be patient and stay tuned for more thumbs up light skin tone. 7. Comment. 19 comments. Vote. 2 left. Chapter 43, I'm back for, 
I called a hiatus due to some issues about work and school, and I came back to read the comments and to all those who only spoke negative things, shame on you and to those who even through this time continue to support the FIC, God bless you all. 7. Anyway, I'm back, with new chapters and after this FF, I've got a brilliant idea for a new FF as well so stay tuned for more. 8. Comment. 33 comments. Vote. 2 left. Chapter 44, Bomb Devil Arc, Final 2, Tokyo, Japan. Two figures sat under the fading glow of the sunset, while watching the sea blue ocean with relaxed expressions. Were you really lying when you said you like me? One figure, a youth with shaggy blonde hair sat at the beach with his partner while his eyes trailed the never-ending waves of the waters. One, you're stupid, you know. Every single thing I did, from my words to my expressions to even the blushes on my face were as a result of my training. His partner, a young woman in a shirt and a pair of torn trousers turned around and glanced at him with her bluish-green irises. Her eyes that were once filled with love and tenderness now emanated iciness. Two, I like you, Rez, I wasn't sure about myself before, but now I know. He admitted with a sigh, before shaking his head in exasperation. I'm leaving. Taking one long last glance at his face, the young woman stood up and began walking away. Wait, Rez, we can run away together like you said before, let me come with you. The young man, Denji chased after her and stopped her from walking away even further. You'll die Denji. After all the people I've killed yesterday, even I don't know what will become of me. She turned around and cupped his cheek with her palm, before leaning in and kissing him softly on the cheek. 1. Stay here Denji, at the very least, with someone as strong as Satoru on your side, you will be safe and don't trust everyone, especially, Makama. She ended her statement and vanished without a trace, leaving Denji standing with mixed feelings. Few days later, a young woman walked out of a train holding a flower in her hand, while immersed in a world of her own. Walking slowly and steadily, she made her way out of the station while she let herself be immersed in fleeting memories. Her expression seemed to change from that of joy, to an anxious one, and to exasperation. After a few minutes of walking near multiple buildings, she decided to walk through an alleyway near the side of a building. Just as she walked through, a small rat ran across her feet, startling her and bringing her out of her stupor. Raising her head, she couldn't help but be startled seeing the unnatural phenomenon occurring right in front of her eyes. A large number of rats seemed to arrange themselves in what looked like a portal as an unnatural amount of negative energy began to diffuse across the surroundings. You know, I love the story of the country mouse and town mouse. Suddenly a familiar voice sounded out, as a pale auburn-haired young woman walked out of the rat portal with a small smile on her face. 2. If I had to choose between the town and country mouse, I think the country mouse is easier to kill. Back in the countryside, I have this friend who has a farm there and we kill them all the time, we even send our dogs to hunt them down. She laughed ominously while walking closer and closer to the young woman. I never thought I'll be important enough to attract your attention, Makama. Rez, the young woman blurted out while placing her hand on the pin around her neck. Hehe, <laughs> you shouldn't have gone near Denji. Makama let out a chuckle. With a small frown, Rez was about to pull out the pin and transform when her arm was instantly cleaved and diced by an invisible force. SHLCKK? The next second, a long spear was immediately hurled through her back, as she spurted out blood from her mouth and knelt on one knee. Out of nowhere, Angel descended behind Makama while holding onto another spear. This should serve as a warning to the Soviet Union for now. Makama walked forward and raised her finger, pointing it forward like a gun while casting a condescending glare at Rez. Bang! In a split second, a loud resounded as an explosion set off, instantly blasting a massive hole through a tall building. Hmm. The dust settled only for Makama to see a silver-haired figure calmly standing before Rez with his fingers crossed, while the ground below his feet was completely obliterated by her attack. 1. I knew you were up to something when you left so suddenly, Makama. He couldn't help but chuckle seeing the look on Makama's face. What are you doing here, Gojo Satoru? 1. Makama's expression was far from joyous, meanwhile, her fists were tightly behind her back. I'm sorry, I can't let you kill her. Satoru chuckled, before he materialized an orb of negative energy and gently pressed it onto Rez's back, healing her wounds. Do you know how many casualties resulted from her actions? Makama interjected while casting a glare at Rez. Cut the crap Makama, we both know you don't care about the people any more than I do. Satoru chuckled. Instead of outright killing her off at once, why don't we use her instead? He added with a smile. I'm listening. Makama put on an interested expression. Like you said, you could use her to discern the Soviet secrets. Also she would be a good addition to the team don't you think? Satoru sat on an invisible platform while his hand rested on his chin. Are you sure of this? Makama asked while narrowing her eyes. Definitely. Satoru nodded and cast a glance at Rez who was encased in some sort of spatial cage. If anything goes wrong, the higher ups would deal with you. She cast a warning glare at him, while he shrugged. I know, but don't worry, after all, I'm the strongest. 3. He laughed before he disappeared with Rez, leaving Makama with a frown on her face. I slash N, sorry for the late update. Anyway, I'll be bringing a new FF soon. A JJK FF where the MC holds the power of the Rinnegan as his cursed technique, let me know of what you guys think. 28. Comment. 24 comments. Vote. 2 left. Chapter 45, Manhunt. Tokyo, Japan. Are you sure of what you're asking of me? If things go haywire, you'll have to deal with the higher ups by yourself. Makama cast a glance at Satoru who had his arrogant smile on his face. Don't worry about that, after all, I'm the strongest. He chuckled, grabbed Rez by the arm and disappeared with her, leaving Makama and Angel standing alone. Your ego would be your downfall, and at that point in time, I'll be there to end you myself. Makama mumbled to herself before walking back into the rat portal as Angel followed behind. Few weeks later, Devil Hunters HQ. Within his room, Satoru sat comfortably on his couch, with a slice of strawberry cake and a can of soda on a small table in front of him, while he watched an MMA fight on the TV. Sigh, I feel like I need enter some sort of seclusion like those Chinese cultivators in Wuxian novels. He thought to himself, while taking a sip of the soda. Dimension manipulation is even more difficult than I thought, although, after completely mastering domain expansion, I should be able to get a gist of it. He mused while rubbing his forehead in exasperation. After a bit of thinking over the past few weeks, he had realized that, although he could be considered to be the strongest devil hunter, he wasn't really the strongest in the verse at this point. If devils were born from fear itself, then there should be immensely powerful devils, far stronger than himself. 
For example, death was one of humanity's most primal fears. If there really was a death devil, then its level of power shouldn't be something the current hymn would be able to handle. After all, everyone feared death. If devils like these exist, and if want to stand on a similar level as them, then I'll need to be able to do more than just create black holes. He sighed and picked up the slice of cake and began to enjoy with a smile on his face. Space was truly one of the most unfathomable elements of the universe. Even with his six eyes and limitless, he could only to be said to have grasped bits of its power. Satoru. As he was immersed in the joys of eating his cake while musing, two excited screams reverberated, as two figures rushed into his room with his permission. What is it this time? Can't a man get an hour of peace to himself? He faced Palmid, seeing Denji and Power who had already seized his cake from him and were already munching to their satisfaction. We're going on a trip. Denji screamed on top of his lungs, while Power nodded excitedly. The next second, Aki and Angel walked through his door with small smiles. Ms. Makuma is planning on organizing a trip for us, to Inoshima. It's high time we relaxed after so many missions. Aki sat down and spoke with a sigh, while Angel quietly sat beside him. A trip? Hmm, a trip does sound kind of fun. Satoru placed his hand on his chin and spoke after a bit of thought. Fine, I'm in. He nodded with a laugh. I hope there's a beach around, Rez and I would swim a lot. Denji sat while a small smile formed on his face. A chainsaw devil dressed in public safety devil hunter uniform was spotted fighting against. The next moment, the MMA fight on the TV was immediately seized, and a news outlet immediately popped up, with a fair young woman seated at a table while reading out current incidents in the country. Oi, Denji, isn't that you? Power blurted out, as Aki and Satoru glanced at each other. I do look good on TV, don't I? Denji laughed shamelessly, while Satoru on the other hand couldn't help but frown a bit. Beep. The next moment, Aki's phone began to beeping, and he answered the call and walked away from the group. Ms. Makuma has requested our presence in her office, it's important. He came back with a serious gaze as the others, including Satoru who was dressed in a simple black t-shirt and gray sweatpants followed him to the main office. I'm afraid but I'm going to have to cancel our trip. Within the office, the members of the group sat with grim expressions, while Makuma lectured with a serious expression. What? No way. Denji was the first to raise his voice in disagreement, while Power seconded his objections. You are in more danger than you can imagine, Denji. Beings like you who can shift between devil forms and human forms are a very rare and valuable asset to every country. The Americans, Chinese, and Soviet Union would rather have you exterminated, than let me have you? She sighed and spoke, while Denji's expression hardened. Also, according to Rez, you're not the only one in danger, Denji. The Soviet Union has allied with the gun devil and other arch devils and have formed an association to terminate you, Satoru. They might take advantage of this whole situation to try to take you out along with Denji. Makuma added, while Satoru lowered his glasses and raised a brow. For now, your movements would be restricted, Denji, and you would be guarded day and night. Makuma added while Denji sighed. Things are getting really interesting. Satoru sighed, before a small smile formed on his face. New York, USA. Within a small house, three youths sat in a room bare-chested while having lunch, and watching the news on the TV before them. We received a mission. One youth with shaggy black hair spoke out first while pressing his phone's screen. They are two actually. Another youth intercepted, one with two scars running down his right eyebrow to his cheeks. We are to assassinate the chainsaw thing, and a devil hunter known as Gojo Satoru. The last youth replied, while the others raised their brows. Wasn't he the one who took out Ol Fang, Jackie, and the devil group in North Korea? The youth with the messy dark hair blurted out in shock. I don't know. The one with the scar sighed and shrugged. What do you mean you don't know? We are no match for him, even Jackie died. The messy-haired youth slapped the back of his brother's head before he sighed. Well, I mean we had to take the mission, the reward is five million dollars. The scarred youth rubbed his head in pain and spoke. Don't worry about it. I think we'll be fine, besides, we are not the only ones who will be hunting for him. If push comes to shove, we can escape at any time. The last youth who had been silent for a while spoke out with a small smile, as the others listened and nodded. Chapter 42, Temporary Hiatus 4 Hey guys, it's the author here, and I want to make a sad and unfortunate announcement. I won't be updating for a week's due to some complications with school and work, but I promise to be back with some chapters after everything is said and done. 10. I'm not dropping the FF, in fact, we've got a few more arcs to cover, so please be patient and stay tuned for more thumbs up light skin tone. 7. Comment. 19 comments. Vote. 2 left. Chapter 43, I'm back 4. I called a hiatus due to some issues about work and school, and I came back to read the comments and to all those who only spoke negative things, shame on you and to those who even through this time continue to support the FIC, God bless you all. 7. Anyway, I'm back, with new chapters and after this FF, I've got a brilliant idea for a new FF as well so stay tuned for more. 8. Comment. 33 comments. Vote. 2 left. Chapter 44, Bomb Devil Arc, Final 2. Tokyo, Japan. Two figures sat under the fading glow of the sunset, while watching the sea blue ocean with relaxed expressions. Were you really lying when you said you like me? One figure, a youth with shaggy blonde hair sat at the beach with his partner while his eyes trailed the never-ending waves of the waters. 1. You're stupid, you know. Every single thing I did, from my words to my expressions to even the blushes on my face were as a result of my training. His partner, a young woman in a shirt and a pair of torn trousers turned around and glanced at him with her bluish-green irises. Her eyes that were once filled with love and tenderness now emanated iciness. 2. I liked you, Rez, I wasn't sure about myself before, but now I know. He admitted with a sigh, before shaking his head in exasperation. I'm leaving. Taking one long last glance at his face, the young woman stood up and began walking away. Wait, Rez, we can run away together like you said before, let me come with you. The young man, Denji chased after her and stopped her from walking away even further. You'll die Denji. After all the people I've killed yesterday, even I don't know what will become of me. She turned around and cupped his cheek with her palm, before leaning in and kissing him softly on the cheek. 1. Stay here Denji, at the very least, with someone as strong as Satoru on your side, you will be safe and don't trust everyone, especially, Makuma. She ended her statement and vanished without a trace, leaving Denji standing with mixed feelings. Few days later, a young woman walked out of a train holding a flower in her hand, while immersed in a world of her own. 
Walking slowly and steadily, she made her way out of the station while she let herself be immersed in fleeting memories. Her expression seemed to change from that of joy, to an anxious one, and to exasperation. After a few minutes of walking near multiple buildings, she decided to walk through an alleyway near the side of a building. Just as she walked through, a small rat ran across her feet, startling her and bringing her out of her stupor. Raising her head, she couldn't help but be startled seeing the unnatural phenomenon occurring right in front of her eyes. A large number of rats seemed to arrange themselves in what looked like a portal as an unnatural amount of negative energy began to diffuse across the surroundings. You know, I love the story of the country mouse and town mouse. Suddenly a familiar voice sounded out, as a pale auburn-haired young woman walked out of the rat portal with a small smile on her face. 2. If I had to choose between the town and country mouse, I think the country mouse is easier to kill. Back in the countryside, I have this friend who has a farm there and we kill them all the time, we even send our dogs to hunt them down. She laughed ominously while walking closer and closer to the young woman. I never thought I'll be important enough to attract your attention, Makama. Rez, the young woman blurted out while placing her hand on the pin around her neck. Hehe, he, you shouldn't have gone near Denji. Makama let out a chuckle. With a small frown, Rez was about to pull out the pin and transform when her arm was instantly cleaved and diced by an invisible force. SHLCKK? The next second, a long sphere was immediately hurled through her back, as she spurted out blood from her mouth and knelt on one knee. Out of nowhere, Angel descended behind Makama while holding onto another sphere. This should serve as a warning to the Soviet Union for now. Makama walked forward and raised her finger, pointing it forward like a gun while casting a condescending glare at Rez. Bang! In a split second, a loud resounded as an explosion set off, instantly blasting a massive hole through a tall building. Hmm. The dust settled only for Makama to see a silver-haired figure calmly standing before Rez with his fingers crossed, while the ground below his feet was completely obliterated by her attack. 1. I knew you were up to something when you left so suddenly, Makama. He couldn't help but chuckle seeing the look on Makama's face. What are you doing here, Gojo Satoru? 1. Makama's expression was far from joyous, meanwhile, her fists were tightly behind her back. I'm sorry, I can't let you kill her. Satoru chuckled, before he materialized an orb of negative energy and gently pressed it onto Rez's back, healing her wounds. Do you know how many casualties resulted from her actions? Makama interjected while casting a glare at Rez. Cut the crap Makama, we both know you don't care about the people any more than I do. Satoru chuckled. Instead of outright killing her off at once, why don't we use her instead? He added with a smile. I'm listening. Makama put on an interested expression. Like you said, you could use her to discern the Soviet's secrets. Also she would be a good addition to the team don't you think? Satoru sat on an invisible platform while his hand rested on his chin. Are you sure of this? Makama asked while narrowing her eyes. Definitely. Satoru nodded and cast a glance at Rez who was encased in some sort of spatial cage. If anything goes wrong, the higher-ups would deal with you. She cast a warning glare at him, while he shrugged. I know, but don't worry, after all, I'm the strongest. 3. He laughed before he disappeared with Rez, leaving Makama with a frown on her face. I slash N, sorry for the late update. Anyway, I'll be bringing a new FF soon. A JJK FF where the MC holds the power of the Rinnegan as his cursed technique, let me know of what you guys think. 28. Comment. 24 comments. Vote. 2 left. Chapter 45, Manhunt 3. Tokyo, Japan. Are you sure of what you're asking of me? If things go haywire, you'll have to deal with the higher-ups by yourself. Makama cast a glance at Satoru who had his arrogant smile on his face. Don't worry about that, after all, I'm the strongest. He chuckled, grabbed Rez by the arm and disappeared with her, leaving Makama and Angel standing alone. Your ego would be your downfall, and at that point in time, I'll be there to end you myself. 2. Makama mumbled to herself before walking back into the rat portal as Angel followed behind. Few weeks later, Devil Hunters HQ. Within his room, Satoru sat comfortably on his couch, with a slice of strawberry cake and a can of soda on a small table in front of him, while he watched an MMA fight on the TV. Sigh, I feel like I need enter some sort of seclusion like those Chinese cultivators in Wuxia novels. 1. He thought to himself, while taking a sip of the soda, dimension manipulation is even more difficult than I thought, although, after completely mastering domain expansion, I should be able to get a gist of it. 1. He mused while rubbing his forehead in exasperation. After a bit of thinking over the past few weeks, he had realized that, although he could be considered to be the strongest devil hunter, he wasn't really the strongest in the verse at this point. 1. If devils were born from fear itself, then there should be immensely powerful devils, far stronger than himself. For example, death was one of humanity's most primal fears. If there really was a death devil, then its level of power shouldn't be something the current him would be able to handle, after all, everyone, feared death. 3. If devils like these exist, and if want to stand on a similar level as them, then I'll need to be able to do more than just create black holes. 5. He sighed and picked up the slice of cake and began to enjoy with a smile on his face. 1. Space was truly one of the most unfathomable elements of the universe. Even with his six eyes and limitless, he could only to be said to have grasped bits of its power. Satoru. As he was immersed in the joys of eating his cake while musing, two excited screams reverberated, as two figures rushed into his room with his permission. What is it this time? Can't a man get an hour of peace to himself? He face palmed, seeing Denji and Power who had already seized his cake from him and were already munching to their satisfaction. We're going on a trip. 6. Denji screamed on top of his lungs, while Power nodded excitedly. The next second, Aki and Angel walked through his door with small smiles. Ms. Makama is planning on organizing a trip for us, to Inoshima. It's high time we relaxed after so many missions. Aki sat down and spoke with a sigh, while Angel quietly sat beside him. A trip? Hmm, a trip does sound kind of fun. Satoru placed his hand on his chin and spoke after a bit of thought. Fine. I'm in. He nodded with a laugh. I hope there's a beach around, Rez and I would swim a lot. Denji sat while a small smile formed on his face. 1. A chainsaw devil dressed in public safety devil hunter uniform was spotted fighting against. The next moment, the MMA fight on the TV was immediately ceased, and a news outlet immediately popped up, with a fair young woman seated at a table while reading out current incidents in the country. Oi, Denji, isn't that you? Power blurted out, as Aki and Satoru glanced at each other. I do look good on TV, don't I? Denji laughed shamelessly, while Satoru on the other hand couldn't help but frown a bit. Beep, 
The next moment, Aki's phone began to beeping, and he answered the call and walked away from the group. Ms. Makama has requested our presence in her office, it's important. He came back with a serious gaze as the others, including Satoru who was dressed in a simple black t-shirt and gray sweatpants followed him to the main office. I'm afraid but I'm going to have to cancel our trip. Within the office, the members of the group sat with grim expressions, while Makama lectured with a serious expression. What? No way. Denji was the first to raise his voice in disagreement, while Power seconded his objections. You are in more danger than you can imagine, Denji. Beings like you who can shift between devil forms and human forms are a very rare and valuable asset to every country. The Americans, Chinese, and Soviet Union would rather have you exterminated, than let me have you? One. She sighed and spoke, while Denji's expression hardened. Also, according to Rez, you're not the only one in danger, Denji. The Soviet Union has allied with the gun devil and other arch devils and have formed an association to terminate you, Satoru. They might take advantage of this whole situation to try to take you out along with Denji. Makama added, while Satoru lowered his glasses and raised a brow. 5. For now, your movements would be restricted, Denji, and you would be guarded day and night. Makama added while Denji sighed. Things are getting really interesting. Satoru sighed, before a small smile formed on his face. New York, USA. Within a small house, three youths sat in a room bare-chested while having lunch, and watching the news on the TV before them. We received a mission. One youth with shaggy black hair spoke out first while pressing his phone's screen. One. They are two actually. Another youth intercepted, one with two scars running down his right eyebrow to his cheeks. We are to assassinate the chainsaw thing, and a devil hunter known as Gojo Satoru. One. The last youth replied, while the others raised their brows. Wasn't he the one who took out Ol Fang, Jackie, and the devil group in North Korea? The youth with the messy dark hair blurted out in shock. I don't know. The one with the scar sighed and shrugged. What do you mean you don't know? We are no match for him, even Jackie died. The messy-haired youth slapped the back of his brother's head before he sighed. Well, I mean we had to take the mission, the reward is five million dollars. The scarred youth rubbed his head in pain and spoke. Eight. Don't worry about it. I think we'll be fine, besides, we are not the only ones who will be hunting for him. If push comes to shove, we can escape at any time. Three. The last youth who had been silent for a while spoke out with a small smile, as the others listened and nodded. Chapter 46, Manhunt 22, Tokyo, Japan. Bang, a loud bang resounded across a mountainous terrain, scaring away the birds around. The next moment, a young man with short blonde hair, dressed in a black winter jacket walked out from a hiding place with his shotgun in hand, while smoke diffused from the muzzle. Walking forward, he tried his very best to hide the mixed emotions on his face, as he watched the body of the coyote, twitch while blood pooled under it. Are you okay, Tolka? A moment later, a voice sounded out, as a frail lady in a long skirt and a similar jacket walked out with a smile. I knew you could do it. She patted his shoulder, while the man nodded softly. Anyway, we have received a new mission this time. She took out a file from her pocket and handed it over to him. Are we supposed to kill two boys? The young man couldn't help but speak with slight surprise. These are not just any boys. The one with the blonde hair is the chainsaw devil, and the silver-haired one is Gojo Satoru. She spoke while her brows furrowed as she mentioned his name. Hold on, you mean, the Gojo Satoru, how are supposed to kill someone like that? He asked with apparent shock in his expression. Don't worry about it Tolka, once there's a will, there's a way, I've contacted some people. 6. She laughed and patted his shoulder. I don't think this is a good idea, he's too strong, what if the plan doesn't go as we want? He can kill us easily. The young man voiced out his concerns, while he glanced at the back of the woman. Faith, Tolka, Faith. He might be strong, but there are powers in this world that can end the world if they wanted to. 8. She added, before walking away completely. Germany. An old man with a long white beard holding onto a cane sat on a bench at an amusement park while his yellowish eyes continually glanced at the little children running happily with desire. 11. A moment later, a man dressed in a red soldier's uniform walked and sat by him on the bench. There's a new mission this time. The soldier uttered in a thick German accent while his eyes rested on the man's unusually ugly face. What is it? The old man blurted out, flashing an annoyed glance at the soldier. Two people dead. The soldier handed a folder to the man who took out a file and read through it. Who's the silver-haired brat? The old man blurted in annoyance. He's Gojo Satoru, an extremely powerful devil hunter. He's suspected to be one of Makama's dogs and needs to be taken down. The soldier explained briefly while old man listened. Are you people kidding me? A team of some of the highest mercenaries just for one of Makama's dogs? What the hell do you take me for? 1. The old man couldn't help but curse out. Obviously he had no idea of the prowess, infamousness, and notoriety of the current strongest devil hunter, otherwise he would have chosen his words wisely. Trust me old man, this guy's is no joke. The only reason why we dare to even take up this mission is because we are allied with America and China and they are willing to help out. The soldier spoke with a frown. Fine, whatever, whatever. The price would be the same as usual. Five million and four kids, three for the ritual and one for pleasure. Eight. The old man spoke with a dirty smile as the guard cursed inwardly. Consider it done. The guard nodded after a bit of thought before getting up and walking away. Beijing, China. Ugh. A loud moan echoed through the roof of a building, and upon further inquiry, it seemed to echo from a small building. One. Four figures were entangled in a bed. Their light bodies moved and touched each other with obscene sensuousness, capable of arousing any man. One. Kwangsai, when are we leaving for the mission? One of the figures, a young woman with a face stitched like doll, asked a blonde-haired beauty who wore an eye patch and was currently being pleasured by other figures. We'll leave right after this session. The blonde-haired woman moaned in between her words before she buried her face in the crotch of another sensuous figure. Meanwhile, back at the public safety division, the Devil Hunters HQ was bustling. The whole place had been armed with even more personnel, while some moved around carrying paperwork to and fro. Meanwhile, within one of the rooms, Satoru sat comfortably in a chair, getting his feet massaged in steamy water, while his morphed into that of ecstasy. This is the life. He let out a breath, and mumbled with a smile. Satoru, what the hell are you doing? Everyone here is on guard for an attack at any moment and you're here getting, getting a massage. 1. Aki walked in before exclaiming in surprise and exasperation. The last few days had been a couple of sleepless nights for him and some staff. Not only did they have to guard Denji all day, they had to be on guard for any hidden attack at any moment. It was exhausting and annoying at the same time. Of course, I need to be in my best shape for the upcoming battle. 
Satoru let out a small chuckle while picking up a soda from a tray beside him and sipped it. Although I must say, this whole situation came sooner than I expected. I mean I knew it was going to happen, but I didn't expect it to come so soon. Satoru sighed and rubbed his forehead in exhaustion. What do you mean? Aki asked in confusion and sat. Isn't it obvious Aki, I'm too strong and too high profile. Someone with abilities like mine and an unfettered mindset like mine is destined to threaten the power balance of this world, hence they want to take me out. Damn, I feel like the main character of an action movie right now, too. Satoru blurted out with an arrogant smile, while Aki couldn't help but face palm. Too. If you knew about it, why didn't you tell us all this while? He asked while casting a confused glare at the silver-haired youth. The path of the strongest is riddled with trials and tribulations. Some of them I must face myself. He spoke with his hands on his chin, like some wise sage. 1. Anyway, don't worry Aki. As long as some devil with extremely unusual abilities doesn't appear, I'm confident I can handle everything all by myself. After all, I'm the strongest. 4. He spoke and stretched open his arms. What do you mean a devil with unusual abilities? Aki raised a brow and asked. Well, you know, once there's no devil with reality-bending abilities, nor one with abilities that can rip through space-time, I will be fine. 5. He answered and took a sip from his soda again. What do you think about the situation? Within the main office, Makama sat behind her desk while Kishiv took out a cigarette from his pocket and smoked. It's even more serious than I thought. Kishiv replied after puffing our smoke from his mouth. However, you should make the chainsaw boy our priority. As for that silver-haired brat, he'll be able to handle himself. Kishiv added while shaking his cigarette slightly, allowing the ash to fall off. Any idea of who we'll be facing? Makama nodded and asked again. I've only been able to confirm Kwanzai's involvement. He spoke with a sigh. I never thought I'll get to see her again. Makama smiled and said. However, with how things are going, Kwanzai should be the least of our worries, as I'm confident that even if I can't handle her, the silver-haired brat would definitely be able to. He frowned and said. Do you think he'll be joining this expedition? Makama asked with a bit of shock. Knowing his character, the probability is very high. Kishai's eyebrows furrowed as he spoke while puffing out smoke. Chapter 47, Confrontation. Are you guys sure about this whole assassination thing? It's already been three days and I've not even seen anything happen. Within a small restaurant, multiple figures sat at a table, having lunch, while a youth with shaggy blonde hair dressed in a white shirt and pants complained while eating his food. Right, go ahead and blurt it out to the whole world that you're being assassinated. Another man dressed in an all-black suit wearing a pair of dark shades rolled his eyes at the blonde youth's antics. I hate vegetables, makes me wanna barf. Ugh. Beside them, an auburn-haired young woman rubbed her stomach in disgust, watching the plate of vegetable salad offered to her. Calm down power. We can change it if you want. A young man dressed in a white jacket and jeans smiled and calmly spoke, causing his teammates to raise their brows. Don't be nice to her Yashida. She's a fiend after all. The man in the all-black suit adjusted his glasses and spoke with a condescending expression, while glaring at Power, the auburn-haired young woman with two blood-colored horns on her head. You're going to regret saying that. Power was about to lash out in anger, when Denji grabbed her hand and forced her to calm down. You guys shouldn't talk to Power like that, devil, fiend or human, she's still a person. Denji mumbled on and on, meanwhile, beside them, Yashida, the young man in the white jacket and Hamura, the man in the all-black suit, both of them being captains of their respective divisions had already noticed suspicious movements within the place and only chose to play along. Right across their table, two figures sat at a different table, while one of them maliciously glared at Denji for some reason. I've already pricked him three times. After the fourth prick, he would be as good as dead, and then we can focus on the real challenge. One of the figures, a woman dressed in a long black skirt smiled towards her partner, a young man with short blonde hair and winked. The next moment, she picked up a small needle and pretended to stagger in her movements and crashed towards Denji's table. Before any of the captains could even realize, she swiftly and stealthily pricked Denji's arm, before slowly getting up and rubbing her forehead in exhaustion. I'm very sorry, you guys. I just came back from chemotherapy and I'm feeling a bit dizzy. She spoke as the two captains frowned, although they nodded and excused her, letting her walk away into the restroom. Notice anything strange, Yashida? Hamura asked in a low voice, while looking at Yashida. Nope. Yashida replied while shaking his head. A few minutes later, the young man who was sitting beside the suspicious woman stood up and walked out of the restaurant, as the two captains glanced at each other. Are you sure we can go into the mall? I thought you guys are supposed to be protecting me, but I feel like I'm being paraded around like an object. Standing before a huge mall, Denji couldn't help but complain, while rubbing his forehead. It's alright Denji we're here to dash, watch out. Yashida was about to explain the situation, when his instincts flared out of nowhere. The next moment, he pushed Denji away with an arm, while he propelling himself backwards with force. In a split second, a large bolt of lightning crashed into the area where Denji previously stood, decimating and charring everything. A devil hunter behind them wasn't so lucky. Tendrils of the lightning smashed into his body, which hurled him through the sky, as he puked blood and crashed into the ground. Shit. Kenshin, go check up on him. Hamura roared out, while he, Yashida and Denji and couldn't turned around and noticed two figures standing at the top of a tall building. Captain. Kenshin called out in horror. When they rushed there, they realized that, the face of the person who had been destroyed by the lightning had changed to a face Yashida was familiar with. Shit. I know him. He's from a mercenary group in the USA, and his three brothers are his accomplices. They have a contract with the skin devil. Yashida replied and settled everyone's doubts. Just as they were speaking, all the humans walking around ceased movement in a sudden. The next moment, the features began to twist into that of dolls as their skin paled and multiple stitches appeared on their bodies. Their heads turned in unison towards the team of devil hunters, before they began to rush towards them in their numbers. Everyone, inside the restaurant now. Hamura blurted out in horror, seeing the hordes of human dolls rushing towards them. The next moment everyone rushed into the restaurant at full speed, shutting the door behind them. Standing on top of the building, two figures couldn't help but laugh out seeing the devil hunter scurry inside like cowards. What a bunch of cowards. A youth with short gray hair, dressed in a black coat blurted out. He had an unusual pair of green pupils that seemed to glow even in the light. I heard the Gojo guy is pretty strong. I just hope he doesn't disappoint us. Beside him, another man dressed in a blue shirt spoke out. You bunch of rascals are here already. Behind them, an old man holding onto a walking stick walked out with a grim smile. Santa, Santa, you look good, old man. 
The silver-haired youth was the first to roar in laughter, seeing the figure of the old man. Aren't we supposed to go after the chainsaw boy? The old man spoke out while his eyes twitched furiously. Chainsaw is but a small fish. The real reason why any of us accepted the mission is because of the one they call Gojo Satoru. The gray-haired youth laughed with arrogance. At the same time, we're waiting for Vale and the others. The moment the man in the blue shirt spoke out, a black veil resembling a shield immediately encapsulated the restaurant. Speak of the devil. The gray-haired youth laughed in the next second, a figure arose out of the shadows, clad in darkness itself. Beside the figure, an ant-like figure, in the likeness of man jumped out of the shadows, before its body enlarged. With a face like that of a young man and a body that resembled that of a man with scales running across in a zigzag fashion. It's good to see the team back together. The new devil figure with the body of a man spoke out, while the one that emerged from the shadows looked on with an apathetic expression. Vroom, in about a few minutes, a black SUV pulled up in front of the restaurant and multiple figures walked out hurriedly. That silver-haired brat hasn't still arrived. Kishiv was the first to walk out with his cigarette in his mouth and his left hand in the pocket of his coat. The next second, Makama walked out, before Aki, Angel and Himeno all walked out behind her. It seems we'll be seeing a couple of old friends once more. Makama chuckled as she turned around towards the group of figures on top of the building. Swoosh! Before anyone could even realize, a silver-haired youth wearing a blindfold mysteriously appeared, dressed in his signature long neck jacket and pants. Oi, good to see you again old man. He teased, before turning his gaze towards Kishiv. Without uttering any other words, he walked towards the veil and gently placed his palm on it. Bang! His body was hurled back as he skid a few meters with his palm completely burned off. He 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 he. Satoru couldn't help but chuckle, before a cool energy encapsulated his palm healing his wound and turning his hand back to normal. Walking forward fearlessly, Aki placed his hand on the veil, however on contact, his palm entered into the veil facing no impediment whatsoever. I see. It's a veil that allows everyone else to go in, in return for keeping Gojo Satoru out. These bastards did come prepared. Satoru chuckled, before his gaze turned towards the couple of figures standing at the top of the building. I'm guessing he's the Gojo guy, his energy output isn't bad I wonder what devils he is contracted with. The gray-haired youth commented while watching Satoru with examining eyes. He's nothing impressive. The man in the blue shirt blurted out while similarly scanning the silver-haired devil hunter. Hmm. The next second, Satoru raised a brow, and gently lifted the left edge of his blindfold. Aki, Angel come with me. He grabbed both of their collars and pulled them to an empty area. What is it? What is the problem? They asked simultaneously, but Satoru squatted in front of them and condensed a ball of negative energy around his fingertip. Denji and the others are in danger, I'm sending you both as backup. He spoke and began to trace his finger on the ground forming a black circular seal around their bodies. Aren't we supposed to stay here and help you against those guys? Angel raised a concern, while Satoru only shook his head. These bunch of idiots aren't enough for me to take even seriously. He chuckled arrogantly, before interlocking his fingers. Swoosh! Clasping his palms together Aki and Angel mysteriously disappeared while a gust of wind erupted. What? The group of figures couldn't help but blurt out in surprise especially the gray-haired youth feeling a sense of familiarity from Satoru's actions. Are you bunch of idiots going to descend from there or should I come there myself? Slowly pulling off his blindfold, he laughed, before his azure gem-like pupils glared at the figures at the top of the building who were immensely shocked at this point. I slash n, sorry for the late update. Chapter 48, 5 BS, 1. Are you idiots going to come down from there, or should I come up there myself? Satoru slowly took off his blindfold and took a few steps forward, while Makama and Kishai stood on his left and right respectively. It seems our target is a bit of a cocky one let's humble him and then finish him off. The gray-haired youth chuckled and waved his hand, and the next moment, his body seemed to levitate, along with the man in the blue shirt, the old man and the devilish looking figure. The figure clad in darkness seemed to mysteriously vanish and reappear in front the devil hunter trio, while the other slowly levitated and landed right by him. You must be Gojo Satoru, I've heard a lot about you, but you're not as impressive as the rumors say. The gray-haired youth chuckled, while his eyes wandered on Satoru's figure. Whether I'm impressive or not he he he, let's decide that after I beat your asses. Satoru's cursed energy flared, like a magma from an active volcano, waiting to erupt. Anyway, let's introduce ourselves, I'm Mirror, this is Electron, Veil, and Switch, we are the top dash. Cut the crap. Before the gray-haired youth could even finish his intro, Satoru was already fed up. With a wave of his palm, an invisible force grabbed onto the body of the fiend clad in darkness, Veil, and pulled him towards himself before any of them could react. Blasting forward at full speed, he clenched his fist and erupted with extreme force, smashing his fist forward into the body of Veil with no hesitation. Boom! A massive shockwave erupted, from the point of collision, as a massive force ripped through the body of the barrier fiend, causing its whole figure to contort and explode, as blood rained down. He he he, am I impressive now? Satoru couldn't help but chuckle, as he flexed his arm and flashed a mocking glare at the rest of the group. He he killed Vale. The first to come to his senses was the old man, who instantly blurted out in shock, seeing a fiend on the level of an arc devil get obliterated with a single punch. You're going to pay for that. The man in the blue shirt roared in anger, as his body blasted forward with full speed, accompanied by the booming sound of thunder. I'll handle these idiots you guys can go. Satoru flashed a gaze at Makama and Kishiv, before he took a step forward and blasted forward at his full speed. Bang, bang, asterisk. The two fighters immediately clashed in a bout of fierce close combat. Electron as his peers like to call him, was a fiend known for his impressive speeds, extremely powerful physique and his ability to manipulate lightning. Your speed isn't bad at all. Satoru dodged a punch from the lightning fiend with a smirk, before he teleported and directly reappeared right before the fiend and casually smashed his fist into the abdomen of the fiend. Bang! A massive shockwave erupted, before Satoru unleashed a whirlwind kick which smashed into the body of the fiend, before he unleashed an immensely powerful repulsive force accompanied by flashes of red ethereal light which hurled Electron flying through multiple buildings. How is it possible for a human to be able to manipulate spatial forces? The fiend known as Mirror, the youth with the gray hair commented, while his brows furrowed deeply. The next moment, space itself seemed to shatter like mirrors around him, as his figure disappeared into the shattered space. Standing all by himself, the old man couldn't help slam the butt of his walking stick into the ground heavily. A while later, multiple human dolls rushed out of more buildings in hordes and attacked Satoru. So you're the one controlling the dolls, huh? I guess you have to die next. 
Smirking arrogantly, Satoru took a step forward, about to unleash an attack, when the six eyes sensed multiple dangerous threats heading towards him. Raising a brow, he instantly sidestepped to the his left, and the moment he did, a blade materialized out of the empty space and slashed towards where he previously stood. Before he could even unleash an attack, the six eyes once more caught wind of a microscopic object smashing towards him with unreasonable force. The next second, the object enlarged into the structure of a large truck which smashed into Satoru's figure, killing multiple human dolls all around. Right beside the old man, a devilish microscopic figure enlarged to the size of a normal human and stood beside him, his gaze intently fixed on the point of collision. Beside them, space shattered like mirrors, as the gray-haired youth walked out with a frown. Is he dead? The old man asked, while he summoned his army of dolls by his side. He was able to detect my sneak attack at the last moment. How was he able to see through the layers of space? Mirror, couldn't help but ask, his eyes filled with shock and surprise. For the first time, he had met an opponent who could seemingly counter his mirror dimension ability. No wonder I could sense a familiar energy around you, you can shift into an illusory mirror dimension, can't you? Walking out of the explosion with not even a scratch, Satoru chuckled, while his eyes rested on Mirror. Mirror's eyes immediately hardened, as he brandished his short katana and readied himself for another bout. And you, you can enlarge or shrink yourself and other things around you, can't you? Satoru asked while his eyes rested on Switch. Let me guess, you are the height devil or fiend no. He placed his hand on his chin while assessing the fiend's figure. Boom, the next second, a large bolt of lightning instantly blasted towards Satoru with immense force. However, just like every other attack, it stopped a few meters right before his face and exploded into flames. Soon, Electron appeared once more, although, his figure looked completely disheveled and bloodied. That attack from Satoru had been no joke. If it wasn't for his superior physique, he would have died. I see, that quite the lineup against a single me, but oh well, it only makes it more exciting. Satoru cracked his fists and flexed his shoulders with a smirk. Without any hesitation, his body instantly blasted towards them at full speed. With a leap, he shot into the sky and descended with a fierce punch accompanied by an immense force that seemed to rip through space itself. With but a wave, Mirror's figure was instantly encapsulated in a shattered space and disappeared, while Electron blasted forward and met Satoru head-on with a massive lightning bolt. Touching a small building beside him, Switch shrank it before he tossed it towards the descending figure of the silver-haired devil hunter and enlarged it to smash into his figure. Seeing their incoming attacks, Satoru chuckled and immediately interlocked his fingers and disappeared before he immediately reappeared behind Switch and unleashed a crushing force which hurled both fiends crashing into several buildings while destroying several infrastructure around. Smiling towards the old man, Satoru was about to take him out once and for all when he sensed another danger coming out of the folds of space near his heart. He immediately used the Limitless, unleashing an immensely powerful attractive force which immediately grabbed into the figure of the gray-haired youth hidden deep within the shattered folds of space and dragged him out into the outside world. He he he. I can do more than just counter your technique. Curse technique amplification. Stretching his palm towards the confused figure of the gray-haired fiend who had just been pulled out of his mirror dime soon by an unknown force, a black hole formed instantly, before it was encapsulated in an ephemeral blue light, while a massive attractive force swept out, pulling multiple human dolls and buildings into the orb. Blue. Boom. Shielding himself with nothing but his mirror dimension, the gray-haired fiend couldn't help but realize the folly of his actions, seeing as how the large blue orb distorted and shattered space all around him. I slash n, sorry for the late update. Chapter 49, Darkness Devil. Seeing the massive blue orb completely distorting space and unleashing immense destruction upon the surroundings, the gray-haired fiend couldn't help but gasp in shock, realizing the folly of his actions. Who the hell is this guy? With thoughts running through his mind, he instantly tried to escape the collision with his mirror dimension. However, the attraction force from the massive blue orb was unrelenting, and before he could even react, it exploded on contact, unleashing a massive destructive force spiraling throughout the entire vicinity. Within the restaurant, two figures faced off against each other while readying themselves, for a head-on clash. I've never fought anyone like you, may I have the pleasure of knowing your name? A handsome young man in a silver jacket readied himself with a taekwondo-style martial arts stance and chuckled to his opponent. You're quite the tenacious one aren't you? Standing before him was a young woman wearing an eye patch, dressed in a tank top and combat pants and shoes. She similarly got into a stance while brandishing the short blade in her hand. With no hesitation, both of them instantly rushed towards each other and began unleashing multiple deadly blows, trying to take each other out. Smiling ferociously, the young man in the jacket unleashed multiple punch kick combo after combo, trying to overwhelm his opponent. However the woman in the eye patch was far more experienced, with a battle IQ that was off the charts. The weaved and bobbed through his attacks, before unleashing a nasty hook to his side with scent hurled him to the side. Clasping his ribs in pain, the young man, Captain Yashida couldn't help but groan, however his instincts kicked in, in a moment, and he immediately sidestepped and dodged a blade that was right across his face. But, before he could even react, a kick smashed into his chest and hurled him towards a pillar. Your skills aren't bad, however they're no match for me. Smiling, Kwang Sai picked up her short blade ready to launch another attack. However, just as she was about to move, both she and Yashida's instincts kicked in, and both of them immediately began bolted away with immense speeds. Boom, a second later, a large explosion ripped through the building itself, distorting space and matter, encapsulated in an ephemeral blue light. Cough cough. Coughing, Yashida being the first to escape walked out of a pile of rubble, and looked at the destruction caused by the attack. He's as terrifying as the rumors say about him. Groaning and smiling, he clutched his ribs and walked away with resolve. Meanwhile, Aki, Angel, Power and Denji formed a team, fighting against hordes of human dolls and several other devils all by themselves. Boom, a similar explosion ripped through their vicinity, taking out multiple human dolls and several devils, giving the group of devil hunters a chance to take a breather. Oi, do you think it's possible for Satoru to handle this all by himself? Walking to a window and seeing the level of destruction caused on the outside, Angel raised a brow and asked before flashing Aki and Denji a questioning look. Counting the one power just killed, on our one, we've only been able to take out about seven devils, yet with a single attack, he completely took out almost all our opponents, I think it's possible. Aki used a towel to wipe the bloodstains off his sword and said with a smirk, how magnificent, to think you'd become so strong, I'd have to seek for external help just to take you down. 
Standing towards a window in the building, Makama's eyes peered onto Satoru's battlefield, while her brows creased slightly. Behind her were multiple corpses of several devils sprawled across the floor painting a gory and brutal scene that would evidently scare the shit out of anyone who saw it. T this? Why in the hell did you even take this mission? How the hell are we supposed to defeat someone like him? Standing beside a familiar figure, Tolka blurted out in fear, seeing the damage caused from an attack from the strongest devil hunter. Relax, Tolka I told you before even if he's extremely powerful, there are powers in this world that eclipse all just be patient. The woman in the long skirt couldn't help but flash a bloody smile when these words escaped her lips. W what are you? Collapsing to the floor in shock, the old man clutched the stub of his missing arm while he shakily glared at Satoru who was walking towards him with an arrogant smirk. You should have done a little research before you chose to attack me old man, now it's too late. Satoru laughed and stuffed his hand into his pocket and walked calmly towards him. You think you're all powerful? Compared to the real powers that exist in this world, you're nothing nothing. The old man flashed a mocking smile, his senses picking up on some peculiar yet familiar movements. Out of my way. Boom. Casually lifting his arm, Satoru extended his palm toward an incoming microscopic projectile towards his left. A small red orb of energy instantly materialized and blasted through the microscopic object which enlarged into a building, before it immediately blew a hole into Switch's body who was right behind the attack, preparing for a sneak attack. What? The old man couldn't help but blurt out in shock, seeing how easily Satoru had taken out the height devil. In a split second, two bloodied figures materialized out of space, and grabbed onto the old man's body, before they bolted into the veil surrounding the restaurant and escaped into the building. You guys want to play, huh? Satoru began to levitate slowly into the sky, rising above the restaurant, far above the veil. Let's play. With a crazed smile on his face, he immediately snapped his finger, as an invisible slash swept out, cleaving through the veil, as well as multiple buildings around. Looking at the level of destruction all around, Satoru couldn't help but laugh at his handiwork. Okay, I've given you guys enough time to hide. It's time for me to seek you out. Laughing, he interlocked his fingers and disappeared instantly with a whooshing sound. Those fucking old fogies. How dare they send us to our deaths. Within a small room, Electron who had escaped along with Mirror and the old man couldn't help but puke blood, while resting his back against a wall. They better hope I don't make it out of here alive, else I'll rip their bodies apart. Glancing at the left side of his body that was completely ripped apart, he roared in anger. You. The next moment, a figure mysteriously reappeared right in front of him with a hand in his pocket. Demon. Electron roared in pain and gathered all of his energy, wanting to unleash another attack. However, Satoru only raised his head, a smirk etched on his face, while his right eye slowly glanced at him. Boom. A slash swept out in an instant, cleanly cleaving through the body of the lightning fiend, as blood spurted all over. Lifting his head, Satoru immediately noticed another bloodied figure hiding through the crevices in space. Tisk. Let me show off a little. Smiling ferociously, he interlocked his fingers, as his cursed energy began to bubble within his body. Cursed technique amplification, blue. With a chuckle, another blue energy orb materialized behind him towards his left. Cursed technique reversal, red. With another chant, another red orb materialized towards his right, as a shockwave erupted. Hollow, purple. With a smile, the red and blue orbs began to fuse together, as wave of annihilation spread, accompanied by flashes of purplish lightning. Soon, a purplish orb exploded forth, accompanied an extremely potent destructive power, ripping an annihilation everything in its path. Shit, he's doing that attack again, everyone hide. Seeing the flashes of purple light, Angel felt a sense of deja vu, as he immediately prompted Aki, Denji, and Power who instantly took cover and hid from the power that was erupting towards them. The injured figure of the gray-haired youth rushing through layers of space couldn't help but cease his movements and in an instant, a massive purplish orb with immense destructive power crushed towards him unhindered. I should never have taken this mission. The last thought on his mind was filled with regret, before he was eventually swallowed up by the purplish orb and reduced to nothing. Sigh. What an extremely terrifying individual. However, it's not over yet. In fact, the fun is now beginning old man. It's time. Looking into the distance, the young woman standing with Tolka arose from her seat and spoke, while the young man looked at her incredulously. With my life and three children as an offering, I summon you, darkness devil. Plunging a blade through his own heart, the old man chanted, before the light of light vanished from within his eyes. The next moment, even Satoru couldn't help but feel a sense on unease, as a wave of darkness immediately encapsulated the entire building. A slash N, have a feeling I might complete this FF very soon. Chapter 50, Enemies Unite 1. With my life and three children, I summon you, darkness devil. 3. With an expression of resolve, the old man plunged the blade through his heart, as the light of life slowly vanished from his eyes, and his corpse sprawled to the ground lifelessly. At that moment, everyone couldn't help but feel chills run down their spine, as if a terrifying presence was heading towards them from an unknown dimension. Even Satoru couldn't help but raise a brow, feeling a far immense and exponentially powerful negative energy that seemed to encapsulate the whole world heading towards them, hidden within the intricate layers of space. Feeling such an overwhelming energy heading towards him, even he couldn't help but admit his inferiority in terms of quantity and sheer potency. 1. The next moment, a veil of primordial darkness seemed to engulf the entire building, as everyone felt their bodies go cold and collapse to the floor. Satoru couldn't help but stagger, as he felt a trickle of blood flow down his nose. He could feel the shift in dimensions, as if space was moving on its own, and carrying them to an unknown destination. 1. He could try to stop or stabilize the spatial forces, or try to teleport them away, but should he? It would be a good opportunity to experience firsthand the powers that lurk within the shadows of such a universe. Flashing a smile, he wiped the blood of his nose with his hand and stood upright, waiting to arrive at the unknown destination. 1. After a second, everyone instantly vanished and mysteriously reappeared in a completely unknown dimension. Even Satoru couldn't help but gasp in surprise, as he admired the new dimension he had been teleported to. Right in front of them were the figures of multiple astronauts in their suits who had been buried halfway into the ground and their bodies aligned. 2. The first five had the lower parts of their bodies inserted into the ground, while their upper part was visible and their palms were bright together in some sort of ritual seal. The other five who had been buried opposite them had their upper bodies inserted and their lower bodies suspending in the air. What a terrifying dimension. 
Satoru chuckled, while his eyes observed everything in much detail. The entire dimension seemed to be encased in darkness while in the sky, were an infinite number of doors which seemed to open to multiple destinations. S. Satoru, where is this? Aki was the first to wake up, his body shivering in fear, while he observed the dimension around. Meanwhile, the moment Denji opened his eyes, he and all the devils and fiends around began to scream in pain, as their bodies collapsed to the floor in exhaustion. Sigh. Everyone should stay calm. Kishive who was standing near Kwangzai within the group couldn't help but sigh, seeing everyone's reaction. Hmm. Wiping even more blood from his nose with his palm, Satoru couldn't help but raise a brow, as he sensed the presence drawing closer to them. 1. At that moment, a figure walked out from within the darkness cloaked in a veil of dark matter. Its head was the skull of a prehistoric beast, and its middle body was made of the skull of five humans. Two long skeletal arms extended from its sides, and its lower part was made out of the skeletal legs from two humans. 5. The moment it appeared, everyone's arms was immediately cleaved off by an invisible force with the exception of the silver-haired youth whose face was filled with that of shock and surprise. S. Satoru, help. Aki stuttered, as he, Kishive and the others fell on their knees. Materializing a stream of cool positive energy within his left palm, and a stream of raging negative energy within his right palm, he sent the positive energy towards the humans, and the negative energy towards angel and power. At that moment, Satoru felt a chill down his spine, as he turned around only to see the gaze of the presence fixated on him, seeing as he was the only one still standing. The next moment, a longsword materialized from out of nowhere before the mysterious presence and shot towards him at immense speeds, as if piercing through space-time. Slash. The sound of flesh being pierced through resounded, accompanied by a spurt of blood, as everyone looked on with shocked expressions. What the hell? Satoru mumbled, as blood burst out of his mouth and nose. Looking down, he saw the long sword embedded right in his heart. Indeed, the attack from the mysterious presence had been able to break through infinity. With a slight wave from the bony hand of the mysterious presence, an extremely powerful yet tiny dark orb materialized at the top of the outstretched finger of the devil, with world-shaking destructive power. 18. Satoru did not even have time to react to it, as the orb blasted towards him at full power. Boom, a large shockwave ripped through the land, followed by a massive explosion at the point of contact. The explosion died down however, only for Satoru's figure to appear disheveled, but beside him stood the control devil herself, Makama. It seems you're not untouchable after all. She flashed him a small smile, as he rolled his eyes and flexed his arms. The wound on his chest was completely healed as was his heart. 2. The darkness devil, one of the four horsemen, said to materialize from humanity's greatest fears. 8. Makama spoke and flashed him a glance. Can it be taken down? Satoru asked, while his cursed energy flared, his reserves being restored to optimum in a flash. We'll need to cooperate to be able to escape, Makama. Replied, while Satoru raised an eyebrow and flashed her a glance. 1. Go. With a command, both of them instantly blasted forward, reaching Nisonic speed in an instant, before they launched respective attacks towards the apparition of the Darkness Devil. Asterisk Curse Technique Reversal, Red. Asterisk. 1. Stretching forth his palm, Satoru immediately unleashed a deadly attack, a testament to the fact that he was planning on going all out. 1. An extremely large red orb, covered in a red ephemeral light smashed towards the apparition of the Darkness Devil, while space seemed to distort wherever it passed. 1. Meanwhile, Makama pointed both of her fingers towards the Darkness Apparition, as her cursed energy bubbled forth. Seeing the two of them unleashing deadly attacks, the Apparition of the Darkness Devil raised a finger, as a small dark orb materialized and blasted forward at full force. Boom! A massive explosion set off, as the shockwaves blasted everyone else back, as it ripped through the land. After a moment, Satoru walked out of the explosion unharmed with a frown on his face. Makama on the other hand looked slightly disheveled with her clothes partially destroyed. 3. The Darkness Apparition however only had streaks of blood running down the eye sockets of the skulls that made up its body. We did some damage, but not enough to hinder its MOV dash. Before Satoru could even finish his statement, an invisible force swept out, grabbed onto Makama's body and twisted her neck to an unnatural degree as blood spurted out. 1. Her body collapsed to the ground right before Satoru who only raised an eyebrow, seeing her corpse fall right beneath his feet. I can't see any hint of victory, however, when push comes to shove, I guess I'll just have to use it. 6. Mumbling to himself, he immediately unleashed a hollow purple, creating a large orb of destruction around himself. 4. Comment. 15 comments. Vote. Two left. 